Okay, welcome to today's Ty Lopez radio podcast. I got special guest Zach Cookman, Rome, Kate, and we're going to be talking about a very important subject, how to deal with horrible people in your life. What do you do? What if they're related to you? What if they work for you? What if you're married to them? What if they're your business partners? What if they're you, th you thought they were your best friend? And we're going to also talk about North Korea. North Korea, we're dealing with a crazy person there. Is it going to start Holocaust? Let's talk. So let me just start by saying this. Um, let me drop this here. One of the number one things that will cause you happiness or unhappiness in life is not how much money you make or uh, they call it extrinsic factors, right? Factors outside your control. It will be your relationships with people. If you really go down to what makes life horrible or what makes life great, it's people. You date the wrong person, marry the wrong person, you guarantee yourself a crappy life. You pick the wrong business partner, guarantee, I don't care how much money you make, it's gonna be a hell on earth. Um, if you are a friend with somebody that you thought had your back, there will, and they turn out, and they're a horrible person, and they get you in the end, don't be surprised if life goes to hell. Now, politics is just an extrapolation of real life, okay? There's no difference. Politics is just dealing with people on a mass scale. So I'm going to go around and we're going to do a couple quick. I want to get a quick feel here. So I'm going to give everybody 10 seconds to answer this. Zach, Rome, and Kate. How do you deal, in this case, not with a bad business partner, but a guy in North Korea who just today, I just saw the newest news that's on Twitter Explore, that he's threatening to attack Guam. Because America has a, a military base there. So that the head dictator of North Korea, Kim Jong-un or whatever you say, however you say his name, he's saying he's going to attack. Now, he's probably lying, but he might not be lying. So how do you deal with an a-hole person politically? Let's try to stick to 10 seconds, and then we'll come back and get further explanation. We're going to start with Zach. We'll go to Kate, and then we'll go back to Rome. We'll alternate sides, and then I'll be last after Rome. Zach, uh, with someone like this, I think if um, man, ten if, seconds, okay, <laughs> that's not <Kate>. ten. <laughs> I'm just joking. All right, sorry. If uh, if the movies are real, which I believe they are, we should probably already have people over there that can easily assassinate the guy stealthily. Okay. And um, so assassination. His, yeah, yeah. Why not? So a bad business partner, you would also probably want to assassinate him no 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 you said we're talking about north korea okay. bad business partners i would just i would uh i would drag their names through the mud and embarrass them <laughs> and push on them social off. media platforms okay um spread yeah. rumors i'd uh, get their names in the national Enquirer. there's others uh, multiple ways you can handle people like that all right but i think i've i've gone past my allotted time all right kate 10 um, second opinion all right, well, in the case of North Korea, I believe we should try to create a peace treaty between us. So we should go for peace. Yes, and uh, for a bad business partner, I would bring them in, talk to them, and try to tell them what they need to work on, or we're going to kick them to the curb. But okay. So not as evil as Zach's plan, but I think everyone should get a chance. All but. right, good point. <laughs> Rome, what you thinking? Um, well, as far as North Korea, I think you would have to look and see what we are capable of doing, what we can do. I mean, you can't just jump out there. So you'd have to see what you can do right. with the repercussions. What would the repercussions be of what you do? Right. Because you don't, you know, you can't go and have a like soft strike because it'll, it'll start a war. So right. you have to look and see what, what you're capable of doing. Are you ready for the repercussions that come with it? So. Okay. I think you'd have to look. So a first super and assess. A measure. Yeah. yeah. And oh, smart absolutely. You have to. I think if you didn't do that, he would have blew him out the water already. But yeah. you don't want to kill a bunch of innocent people either. Yeah. But that's war. So. So my opinion. That's a good point, Rome. I think my opinion is I would probably try to find somebody that, and this is best case scenario. I would try to find somebody that North Korea looks up to and has to listen to aka china and see if <laughs> dennis we can, rodman <laughs> or dennis rodman zach says and try to get them to negotiate it first because they don't like america so no matter what america does it's going to be hostile 
And then if that doesn't work, then you go to stage two, which is I'm much more of a Zach person versus preemptive strike, which is going to kill a lot of innocent people. Try to take out these crazy. I'm always a fan of taking out horrible dictators. I don't understand why Saddam Hussein people think that wasn't the right thing to do, even though it did cause instability in the region by getting rid, you know, it created a vacuum. And I'm not no expert on Iraq, but Libya, Muammar Gaddafi, I read a book about Muammar Gaddafi. This guy was crazy. And if he wasn't a leader and was just doing that stuff in every day, we'd be, he'd be in jail. So why should people be exempt? I also think you could go in and try to pull the extract people and put them in front of a world court or something like that. So, Oh, that'd be good. You like that? Yeah, yeah. We need Nicolas Cage and The Rock and Vin Diesel in North Korea. No, I mean, you need the real life guy, the Navy. It's probably hard to extract them. I would say that's not my most reasonable plan. Somebody said, Kate is so awesome. Let's do a quick giveaway here. Let's do a giveaway. All right, Kate, we're going to be giving 100 bucks, not a whole stack, right here to somebody watching this live. Tell me when to stop, Kate. Close your eyes. All righty. Facebook, we're going to give away first. Then we'll do All Instagram. All right, ready? One, two, three, stop. Trenton Samuel. He wrote Metro Boomin. Okay, that makes no sense, but you still won the $100 paper. He's <laughs> Metro about, Boomin won him 100 bucks. He's talking about rappers. He's talking about music while we're talking about North Korea. Okay, so second question. And while you're listening to this, try to answer it yourself. Because one of the things, I did one of my millionaire mentor calls. I did my first millionaire mentor call. I decided I'm going to mentor personally a handful of people or a group of people in a small test group. So today I did my first live call. Every Tuesday I'm training them. By the way, if you want to get in, you got till Friday because I'm closing the test group Friday. I only had it open for a week. And so already people have gotten in the first four. And what I talked to them about is being a hyper curious person. If you want to make more money, you have to be able to mix and match different ideas into new trends. I call it trend stacking. You take one trend from here, one trend from here, one trend from here. You blend them all together. That's what Netflix is. Netflix is a combination of multiple trends, the trends for home delivery, the trends for online streaming, the trends for no late fees, the trends for subscription, okay? So they, they blended four trends and they beat Blockbuster. Blockbuster went bankrupt and uh, Netflix now has 100 million people. They just passed paying them $10 a month, 1 billion guaranteed revenue uh, per month, okay? It's a real good success story. So, the reason I'm talking about North Korea and a little politics and a little business is because the more diverse your knowledge base is, the more you can blend ideas together that nobody else ever thought to blend together. Most people are very, uh, very narrow minded. They focus if they like fitness, you know, they're a personal trainer. They just focus. How do I make money in fitness? If they're a, uh, you know, own a restaurant, they only read restaurant magazines. And I, I was reading an interesting book about the story of Hollywood. One of the most powerful men ever to be in Hollywood. This is, I'm in the vicinity of Hollywood. This is Beverly Hills. But my our neighbor, Hollywood, was a guy who started CAA. CAA is still around. It's called Creatives Artists Agency. It's one of the biggest talent agencies. They manage movie stars and a lot of sports people. And um, his name was Michael Ovitz. This man was the godfather, the real godfather of Hollywood in the probably the mid 80s to the mid 90s. I mean, powerful guy. And he would he got 250 magazines per month. What? He had 250 mag 150 magazine subscriptions per month. You can read the book. It's a new book. It's, it says CAA on it. I forget the title. And he would he of course didn't read every article in all 250 magazines. That's not realistic. But he would flip through what caught his eye, but he would be getting restaurant magazines. He'd be getting sports magazines. He'd be getting architecture magazines. And that allowed him, he said, that when he met with people, he could find common ground. One of the things, if you want to do business networking, you got to find common ground with people. So people you meet who have different interests, if you know nothing about it, you create the opposite of a common bond. You create a, vac you create a vacuum. <laughs> you know, A lot of people, I've had people <clears throat> that, I, that meet me and I'll, we try to talk for more than five minutes and there's nothing to talk about. You know, to be a good networker, 
you got to go, ooh, I'm talking to Elon Musk. Let's talk about space. If you ever bump into him. Oh, I'm talking to a, a you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. What's Arnold Schwarzenegger like? Well, he likes bicycles. If you watch his Instagram, he, he bicycles all the time. He likes cigars. If you ever met Sylvester Stallone or one of these big people, trust me, they don't want to talk about, oh, I loved you in the movie <laughs> Terminator. They've heard that a thousand times. But if you can say, you know what, I saw you smoking that you know, Havana, blah, 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 cigar. Have you tried this? They'll sit there and talk to you for an hour. And so being diverse is important skill. And that's why we're talking about um, King, Kim Jong-un, even though my podcast is not a political one, I still want to be wide base of knowledge. Okay. I know that uh, Ovitz used to, with the, the 250 magazines, one of his favorite things was that highlight magazine. <laughs> <laughs> and on the back, you know, where you see what isn't right, he would use that as a, a test. You know how you do your personality <laughs> tests? When people would come in to talk well, with him, he would, he would ask them, what's wrong with this image? Yeah, or, isn't that exactly it? Or what is, <laughs> what's missing or what's not right about this, this picture? So that, that was, was just like it, a little, little trick he did. Zach is here for words of wisdom that I forget about. Okay, so here's the second round of questions. We're doing a speed round <laughs> question here. Back to our 10 seconds. I took longer, but... I'm trying to host this thing. Here's the question. We'll go Zach, Kate, Rome, me. Is the way that Donald Trump, and I'm going to give you more, you can give a minute. Donald Trump, the way he's handling it. He's so a what, liar. <laughs> Rome hates Trump. Zach likes him. Um, Kate, I don't, I'm not sure, but I don't, in your words, what he said today on the news was he says, we will rain down, what was it? Fire and fury. And fury if North Korea does anything, okay? Is this the proper response to a horrible person in your life? Should you tell them at times, obviously not all the time, but is that the right response sometimes? Just warn them, you mess with me and I am going to bring fire and fury to you. Did Trump do the right thing? Beginning with Zach, 30 seconds to one minute. Well, I don't know if there's, a, if there's an absolute on how you handle your there's opinion. so much stuff that, that we don't know about. Um, I think you do have to be tough with people that are trying to be tough. I don't think you can placate or be nice or try to reason with people that are not reasonable. So give a thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up. So, okay. How Trump handle it? Okay. I am pro-war. <laughs> give war a chance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Kate. Well, um... I think that it is true to be, it's better to be feared than loved, but um, I think the way he's making it sound is he's not thinking about all the soldiers' lives that are going to be lost if we get into war and all the innocent people dying. I think, I think he should not be so hateful or so, just so forward with it, like, I'm going to bring fire down, like, I don't know. I think he should be less. A bit more diplomatic. Yes. Okay, good point. So thumbs up or thumbs down? Um, I would say it's kind of like sideways. There is no sideways. <laughs> up or down? I don't know. If, if, she, if that's how she does sideways. Akya? Then. Akya? Or what, what's the one that Ali G nish, does? Nish, nish. Nish, nish or Akya? Nish, nish. Okay, Rome. Uh, well, as far as the comments go, I'm sure he wants to exude power and doesn't want to make it seem like we're getting punked by North Korea. Right. At the same time, I think North Korea thinks he's a punk anyway. And, and it could be a bluff or it couldn't be. I think, you know, they're, they probably figure he's insane so we can be just as insane. Hmm. I don't think it was beneficial for us though. I don't think it, it added anything. Um, it's like tough talk to me, you know, and I think Trump talks a lot of tough talk. Well, you're a tough guy. Do you ever think, do you use tough talk to shut somebody up? I don't up? think, I don't think you have to. I think actions speak louder than words. I mean, right. If you're going to do something, you're going to do it. I'm not, I'm not the type of person going to do a whole lot of talking. Yeah. Rome will just hit you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do think <laughs> there, there shouldn't be a whole lot of running of the mouth if you're the president. I, I think you got to be tough with them, but not necessarily yeah, you have I to mean, be was he tweeting about it or was it no no it was a press conference here let me do oh, a quick okay. we're gonna do a quick snapchat interlude here at break so we're doing thumbs up to, or thumbs down to how trump is dealing with north korea zach said thumbs up 
Kate said thumbs down. Nish, Rome, nish. are you up or down? I probably would say down. Down. So we we're t- one of the things I was saying with horrible people in your life. The best thing to do is get good at reading people, so you never get in the situation. So business partner, best thing to do is read people, because once you sign that damn business partnership document, it's too late. You're in it. So what happens in this case where North Korea put a guy in that we have no control over? You can't screen the guy out, but sometimes, believe it or not, you can use um, other forces. You could use China, you can use economic sanctions. North Korea is a tough one, boy. Nuclear is it. If there's even a 1% chance that a nuclear bomb will hit the United States, you better be careful because, oh boy, you talk about, you think 9-11 was a recession? Yeah, the world will change how we know it. If not, if not, if there was ever any nuclear, you don't want, I don't care what country you're in. I don't care if you like the United States or hate them. If you live in Brazil, if you live in Russia, if you live in China, if you live in any part of the Middle East, Africa, Asia, you are probably not going to like the economic repercussions of a Holocaust situation. Let me put it this way. There's a, there's a book that talks about there's never been a war between two com- countries that have McDonald's. And what they were saying, it's I think it's in the book Freakonomics, the concept that people don't go to war usually that have economic interests, right? Because no one, even if you don't like the other guy, you don't want to blow up the guy that pays you, okay? So with North Korea and with Cuba, since we did economic sanctions and we cut off these countries, there we, we don't make money from each other. So that's off the table. We can't use the fact that, like England, England ain't gonna attack America. And China's probably not gonna attack America anytime soon because who buys all the Chinese goods? America. And it's gonna be a dark day in hell. Right now, the economy is killing it. I mean, I, I was talking to my buddy who, um, a Colombian, he's from Colombia. And he's up here visiting. It's Herman's wife's brother-in-law. And in in Bogota, the city of Bogota, an apartment is like four grand a month rent, which means to me, damn, Colombians are making a lot of money. That's almost U.S. prices. So Colombia's economy's up. Argentina, we had some people from Buenos Aires, up. Europe, up. The day, the day that there is a nuclear bomb or a, even a dirty bomb in the United States, real estate markets will completely seize up. Cash flow will seize up. Your credit cards are gonna get, be, they're gonna start cutting your credit limits. The second there is, um, you, you are going to see your 401k hit the freaking, I mean, it's gonna be a nightmare. Let me just say that. If there is a nuclear bomb in the US, your 401k, real estate holdings, your credit cards are lines of credit are going to get cut. Um, you are going to see mass strikes and unemployment shoot through. Remember what happened in 9-11? That's nothing compared to nuclear because nuclear not only is scarier, it has radioactive fallout. And the second one person does it, there's something that criminals, they call it copycat effect. Someone else is going to be more likely to be able to do it. Now, I'm just going to say this. Warren Buffett predicted by 2050, okay, he's counting because he has an insurance company. He almost guarantees there will be a nuclear, some sort of nuclear attack on the United States. He says it's inevitable. This is Warren Buffett, not some crazy person. This is a smart guy. So, uh, war should be a last resort when it's nuclear because ain't nobody going to like it. And I would guess that if this King Jong Il Un causes a nuclear war, somebody in his own people are gonna assassinate him. Nobody wants that, man. Nobody wants it. So, yeah, you're right. You obviously don't want war as an option, but with people like this, I think if you look at history, you're gonna see you can't do a treaty, you can't do a negotiation, you can't be Neville Chamberlain, right. or even in the '90s, whenever they did the deal that let North Korea start. Uh, yeah, that, that was the, who did that deal? Who was well, that? Well, it was the Clinton administration. I forget who the... Clinton? The, uh, Bill Clinton? Yeah, but I forget who is... Uh, you should have never... I can't never, think of the name. I said this about 
two years ago, I think it's on one of my YouTube videos. I said, mark my words, it's not gonna be Iraq that's gonna be a problem. It's North freaking Korea. Because here's another principle that Alan Nation, my second mentor told me, he said, the things you worry about rarely happen. The things you worry about rarely happen. The things you don't worry about are what happen. The pr See, the way your brain works is you have depression, anxiety, fear, and worry. Evolutionary psychologists will call this functional parts of the brain. What functional means is they serve a good purpose. There's three main reasons humans are depressed. One is to cause negative emotions to make sure you don't do the same thing again, okay? So like if you got depressed because you were mean to your girlfriend and she left you, then it starts computing your brain that don't be so mean to the next girl you meet or she'll leave or vice versa, okay? The second one is it creates a cry for help. Sometimes you need help and when you're depressed, other people notice it and if you have true allies, they come and they're close to you, right? And there's other reasons, but those are two huge ones. There's a couple other subjects. With this situation with North Korea and so on, we weren't worrying about it. I mean, North Korea was not that talked about until really recently. It was talked about intermittently, but we were way more talking about Iran, Iraq, Somalia at one point. So just remember this, have a broad brain about what your potential worries are. You know what I told people today on the call? I said, people are so worried about starting their own business. What if it doesn't wor work out? Let me tell you what you should worry about much more. Choking to death. Third cause of accidental death in the United States after cars, and I forget what the second one, is choking to death. It's not a big deal if you start a business and you fail. Who cares? You could start another one. The average millionaire, it was their third business that made him rich, meaning most people do fail and they do just fine in the long run. But if you choke to death, game over. But how many people do you ever think today, sit there and go, mm, let me chew my food 20 times on this steak? No, the third leading cause of death. Again, what you don't worry, another thing is driving a car. Man, the most dangerous thing you do. I, Zach is afraid of airplanes. Nobody dies in plane crashes. I think in a commercial, commercial plane crash, <laughs> Not one person's died in the last two years in a commercial. Well, you didn't say that. You said nobody dies in a plane crash. That's what statistically made me sit up. per years, per year, no one dies. <laughs> Zach's worried about 747s, but he drives like a maniac. I've driven with <laughs> Zach. He drives without looking. He texts while he drives, and dude, he he, he has I a I take one naps. <laughs> I... Zach falls asleep. I have a hot plate. <laughs> Zach juggles. <laughs> he practiced. Drive with my knees. <laughs> anyway, all right. Um, okay, let's do the third speed, speed round here. You're now the president of the United States. Oh, let's do a giveaway. Let's do a $100 giveaway. Quick giveaway. All right. All right. We're going to go Instagram live. Be commenting and hearting right now. Somebody said Prodigy died by choking. Is that true? Is that how the rapper died? Prodigy? That's what they reported. Really? Yeah, but he was in a hospital, so he was probably already, he was already oh, ill. Oh, was like you know, a, so yeah. it was probably an accident. And oh. Mama Cass. She choked on a ham sandwich <laughs> from the mamas and the papas. Is that true? No, nah, it's a, no. It's, it's, it's a an song? old joke. <laughs> Is that a, That's true, not how she died. That's a true insider joke that no one gets. Mama <laughs> Cass from the mama <laughs> and the papas? Yeah. Zach's dating himself. Okay. Uh, no, I read. Okay, tell me when to stop, Kate. Close your eyes. Alrighty. You Instagram. Ready. One, two, three, stop. Okay. F we got Flex and G. Flex and G. Congratulations. Now we're going to do YouTube and we'll do YouTube and uh, Twitter here shortly. All right. This is the third speed round to conclude this episode. All right. Here's what we're talking about. Is that how long we've been rolling? 25 minutes or so? Yeah. Okay. We'll good. A couple minutes good. More. Yeah. Here is. You're now the president of the United States. What do you do tomorrow? President of the United States, you are now Donald Trump or <laughs> the incarnation of Donald Trump. What do you do? Anything. You just issue another statement, do research, drop a bomb, assassinate. Somebody said take a dump. Thank you, James Franco, one, two, three. <laughs> All right, what would you do, Zach? Um... Well, with uh, the limited knowledge I have of the current situation, 
Uh, I'd probably start moving towards some sort of action. Military I movement? Yeah, I, I don't know. No, I wouldn't poke at it. I wouldn't poke at him. I would do as much stealthily as possible. I wouldn't try to do any kind of major yes. movement. Okay. Because I think he's ready to okay. attack Guam. All right. I mean, I, can, I don't know. I just found out about this before we started the show. <laughs> Kate, what yeah, would you do? Um, You're president tomorrow. Well, what if you... I was the president, um, from my limited knowledge as well. <laughs> um, what would I do? Send Somebody him a, under the table, like tickling your feet or something. Oh, no, Kate, Kate giggles a lot. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm just like, he's a Sorry, professional I'm giggler. A giggler. They I'm say that's so a good. sign of high intelligence. That's all good. Is that true, Zach? Yeah. <laughs> Zach is going to be the guy who just makes up facts all over the radio podcast. It's on yeah. Wikipedia. I put it on there, but it's on there. <laughs> Zach started a page. Yeah. Tickle facts. I don't know. Um, let's have Rome be the president first. All right, you're going to pass? All right, Rome. <laughs> If I was Donald Trump, yep. I would resign and let someone more knowledgeable take over. <laughs> hey, that's a real answer. <laughs> no, I would resign right now because he's in over his head and let some more diplomatic people who know what they're doing and can assess the situation way better because at the end of the day, we don't want to go to war no matter what. Okay. You know, so the, the situation needs to be resolved yeah. in the most diplomatic way possible, but we do not want to go to war. So you're resigning and putting someone else. Okay. This is my opinion. Uh, here's what I'm doing. I And this is just a crazy idea. Crazy idea. There's an old saying. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. I don't know if this will work. But what happens if you agree to meet with the guy in person? Now, a lot of people will say you shouldn't do that because you're legitimizing a dictator but he's already legitimized he is the leader of a country that we consider a sovereign nation north korea i mean it's a nation we know there's borders there's boundaries it's not a made up you know it's not a neighborhood or something like that so maybe donald trump doesn't meet him because that might be a little bit risky security wise but send the vice president and, and you come and you keep your friends close and you keep your enemies closer. You say, listen, man, we realize that we've had horrible relationships with you. We realize we had a war with you. But look, nobody wants a nuclear war. If there's a nuclear war, we promise you every single one of you will be assassinated. You will hit America probably, but you will all be dead and every family member you have. Okay, and but I would say it just in a nice way. Listen, let's be real here. How do you say that in a nice? You tell the truth. You don't. Threaten. <laughs> you all die. No, you don't threaten. Everyone. You say <laughs> family. You don't threaten. You say listen. It's inevitable. That's exactly. You what say we happen. got satellites watching you. I know exactly where you live. We know everywhere. We got fifty spies paid off in your thing. You are all gonna die, and <laughs> it's gonna mess with our country. Let's do this. Let's do this. What if his response let's is we're prepared to die? What about you? Um. You know what? Very few people are prepared to die. That's well, but I, I, a lot of Muslims are. I and that's, like this is why. Savages. This is what I say. This is why I say poor that. people are. Like, well, they're not I'm, poor. I'm talking about terrorists. Right. I'm talking about. That's where I'm mostly referring to as terrorists. Radical Muslims. Radical no, Muslims, if you will. Muslims. Yes, they're prepared to die. So how do you kill somebody whose soul's already dead? And so, if, I mean, obviously, the, I'm sure the whole country doesn't feel this way. But if he feels this way and he dictates or runs that country. The only, the only person has to matter to is him. Man, I will tell you. It, yes. Adolf, and how do you negotiate with someone whose starting point it's is not a negotiation. your death? It's not a negotiation. You're not negotiating. So and here's what a negotiation is. A negotiation is you try to get people to compromise. Now, I know a little bit about psychology. One of the things I teach people about reading people, there's three major flaws that humans have. It's called the dark triad. So it's narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopathy. Psychopathy is what we're dealing. So here's what psychopath means. A psychopathic person is somebody who has no fear of consequences. So 80% of Navy SEALs are psychopaths. A lot of police officers, much higher than the regular part. That's how, that's why they take the job because they don't fear much. So they go. So there's good psychopaths and bad psychopaths. I read an interesting psychological report on they did more in-depth research on psychopaths one thing they found is they're not very motivated 
by consequences. That's why I said when you sit down with them, you send somebody very skilled, very good talker, a Bill Clinton type person, and you sit down and you don't threaten them. You don't say, we're going to kill you. It doesn't work. They don't think it's going to happen. Psychopaths always think they'll get... Psychopaths who go to prison are always surprised. They're like, wait, I was killing people every day in my backyard and I got caught? That's what they found in this report. I, I'll try to find the link to it. But they respond to rewards. So I wasn't quite done. I was saying, you tell them, look, we ain't, it ain't going to be good for anybody. But if you guys will shut down your nuclear things, we'll pay you. We'll make you, a, we'll give you $10 billion. Now you might say, but Ty, that makes the problem worse. They'll take the 10 billion and make nuclear. You say as terms of the conditions, you say money, we will be sitting there. We'll have a new, an inspection base in North Korea. Now you might think this is crazy, but let me tell you in history, there was two famous conquerors in history. One guy's name is Alexander the Great. You probably heard of him. He's considered Genghis Khan, Alexander Great, considered the most powerful conquerors of all time. Genghis Khan conquered from Mongolia, and he almost got basically to the, what's the river, in, the Rhine River in Germany. So he conquered all of, uh, you know, Russia, uh, Middle, uh, Eastern Europe, and so on, all the way basically to Western Europe. And then he, he died and went back. Okay. Alexander the Great, some people consider the greatest one. He was a Macedonian. Macedonia is a part of the world, still a country. It's near like Italy, Greece, Albania, all this kind of exact area, okay? He was Macedonian. And he went, and he was very warlike. And he went, and he conquered everywhere. He made his way all the way to India. In India, he was, the, at the, he was 30 years old, and he conquered the known world. And an arrow hit him, and he died of an infection. Okay, so he died at, I think, under 32. It might be 31, 30. Okay. But his father is more interesting to me. His father was a guy named Philip of Macedon. And this is what his father did. He was not as rich. He was not as famous. But he died an old, happy man. And you know what he did? He paid off everybody who wanted to fight him. He said, oh, you want to fight me? Here's 20 million bucks. Let's become friends. And people were like, I like that. <laughs> now, you, what's better? What's better, being the tough guy? And having a nuclear bomb hit the freaking United States, it will be a 10-year economic recession. Your job is going to go to shit because people aren't going to be buying iPhones. Your house value, if you have a house worth 400 grand that you want to sell and move, it's going to be worth 200 grand. Uh, your credit card is going to get cut. Your 401k will drop in half. If you're okay with that so you can be the tough guy, be my guest. Pay the damn guy off. Now, people bring up Adolf Hitler, and they say, well, Hitler would have killed the Jews and started World War II. No. There is a very fascinating, um, did you know at the beginning, before Adolf Hitler was killing everybody, a group of Mennonites. Mennonites are people that are pacifists. They're a religious group. They're like the Amish. Out of Virginia, a guy went to Mennonites. True story. You can Google it. They went to Adolf Hitler in Germany, and they said, we will buy the Jews from you. You don't want them, we'll give you money. Now, Adolf Hitler needed money. Everybody loves money. People who say they don't love money, love money. You got a friend who says, oh, money's the root of all evil. Stick 10,000 bucks in their face and say, you want this? They go, yes, sir. <laughs> That's, unless they're Mother Teresa, they're taking the money. So I forget the amount. I think that the total amount for the Jews, I think Hitler said he wanted something like $10,000 per Jew. And the, and the Mennonites came up with enough and they shipped like a thousand Jews back to America and none of them died. And if I did the once the calculation, I did the calculation on just my phone, the calculator. I calculated how much it would have cost to buy all four million Jews from Adolf Hitler early in the war before he went crazy. He went a little crazy later. He was on a lot of drugs. He used to put cocaine in his eyes, believe it or not, or, or one of these at methamphetamines he used to take. It he works. Got, it works. Zach, that's why Zach's wearing sunglasses. Um, but I think you could have bought all the Jews, which would have not prevented the whole freaking Holocaust, for like a hundred million bucks. Do you know how much a war cost? A hundred million bucks a week back then. So it, it doesn't make sense mathematically in the death. Money. Philip of Macedon 
over a thousand. Uh, let's see. I think when was Alexander the Great? About a thousand years ago, I think. <laughs> Roughly a thousand years ago, maybe a little more. His dad just paid everybody up and he lived a long life. So who do you want to be? Alexander the Great. You're the tough guy. You die at 32 and you're dead. Or Philip of Macedon, he had he was a he was like one of those jolly um, King Richard, Robin Hood. He had his he had beautiful women on. I'm like, dude. He was a Hugh Hefner. He was a Hugh Hefner. BC. We, what do we need more in this war? <laughs> Nuclear bombs or Hugh Hefner? And and I'm not a pacifist, by the way. I am not a pacifist. There might be a time you got to take out Kim Jong Un, but you might. The guy listens to Don to Dennis Rodman. Here's what I do. You go to Dennis Rodman. You say, Dennis Rodman, we'll pay you a hundred million bucks if you solve this. Dennis Rodman will be like, you just come. I don't come. think he listens to Dennis Rodman. He listens to I think he. Dennis Rodman. He went, likes Dennis Rodman because he he's him. quirky and so on. But I, I highly doubt that he listens he to He loves Dennis basketball Rodman. players. Send fucking Steph Curry, Dennis Rodman. It's happened in his I'm sure he separates. Send Jimmy Goldstein. <laughs> the NBA guy, he's weird. Yeah, yeah. send him. Or offer, offer Kim uh, lifetime courtside seats to any game he wants. Yeah. Now, you guys think this is crazy. This dude's crazy. He loves Disney. You know that? This dude loves Disney. We Why will not? send Pluto or Goofy to sit with you courtside. <laughs> no, forget that. Dennis Rodman, a hundred million bucks. If this thing comes and send a couple other people, send diplomats and the vice president. Try first, man. Uh, one thing I've learned, you know, I grew up, I play basketball, a lot of project stuff. Fights rarely end exactly how you think. A lot of people watching way too many movies nowadays to think how fights go. People watch, you know, there's not one realistic fight scene in all of Hollywood. You see guys getting hit 10 times in movies. <laughs> no one gets hit 10 times, solid knees to the face flying thing. Fights end unexpectedly. The second you pull your gun on North Korea, God knows what happens. What if China picks their side? Because China does not like the thought of America being on their border, just like we didn't like the thought of the Russians being in Cuba and the Cuban Missile Crisis in the 1960s. So was it the 60s or the 50s? I mean, it was the 60s. So basically, it's unexpected. The second the gun goes out, you never know who gets shot. So you go there, as one of our great presidents said, you carry the big stick, but you walk quietly. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. This is the godfather rule number one. Keep your enemies sitting at your table. I even have business people that I don't particularly like. Not as part of my business partners, but company. You know what? I text them every once in a while. Because what happens when you let your enemy get a little too far away from you? Then they start scheming. I've seen this. I have seen, I've not seen it on the scale that we're dealing with here, but we basically are now at the head. You're either going to do what Zach says and literally escalate. And I, again, I am not a pacifist. Uh, there is a time for war, but it's too high a stakes nowadays. One new, let me put it to you this way. Nagasaki, Hiroshima. Have you ever seen the footage of Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It was such a big bomb. I just read this book that if you even looked for a millisecond, you were instantly blind. We're talking my we're talking three miles away. Blind. If people there was people, your skin, people would just walk down the street and their skin fell off. That was one of the very common things. Okay. The current nuclear bombs are a hundred times more powerful than that. One hundred. I scaring everybody. Oh, I am. Uh, no, no. I <laughs> facts. That shit hits new. That hits Los Angeles. That hits uh, Anchorage, Alaska. That hits Guam. It is. It will be the biggest event in human history. Let me just put it to you that way. What if I told you this is the biggest event in human history, which it clearly is. We never had this firepower. Would you? You know, this isn't even talk about the news. There's still Kardashian news on. Oh God! You, you, <laughs> why is anybody talking? This is the you know I rarely talk about politics. This is the biggest thing that's rolled down humans' plate in ten thousand. Humans are predicted to be about ten thousand years old as we know it, civilization speaking. Ten thousand years. Do we want to just jump it? What if there was a one in ten chance that the world as we know it is end? You wouldn't want to send a few 
ambassadors to talk it over first. I hate that we don't that we have this stupid policy of we legitimize dictators by speaking to them. That's idiotic. You should talk to them. If we could have met with Adolf Hitler, good chance it wouldn't have been as bad. Good chance. Sometimes these guys are tricky. But in World War II, you had all the dictators got together. In World War II, America got together with Joseph Stalin, and Stol Stalin was a bastard. I mean, this man was a bastard. And we still got together with him, and he helped us win. The Russians helped America and the Allies win World War II. If you don't know shit about history, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Russia came on, the, there's three fronts we came on. The Western Front, we came from the South, up from Italy and North Africa. But the biggest one was there was generals like Sam Saroff or one of these guys uh, that Stalin just threw tens of millions of soldiers at Germany. And if it was not for the Russians, you and I might all be speaking Germany, German right now and wearing swastikas. Hitler was close to winning World War II, so you need allies. That's why I said you send ambassadors to North Korea. You send ambassadors to China. You sit, the president of the United States should sit down with the president of China, the, the prime minister. It's insane that they're not, that he should be in China right now. And he should sit there and say, listen to me. We buy all your shit. If you, if North Korea, your neighbor hits us, we ain't gonna buy your shit. And if we don't buy your shit, you will be ousted as the prime minister uh, of China. Somebody said we already talked to China. Talk we, to him again. Yeah, we did, but but I mean- at Never, the same don't time, stop. China's its own country too, and China has their leadership too, and, and you know, they have their needs and demands too, and I think they do understand that they're kind of the link between the United States and North Korea, and they have power there, but they've chosen not to, to use it. But a little convincing. A little persuasion. Let me just talk about business. I know more about business than I know about politics. I know that people have walked into investors and said, invest in my business. And those investors are smart and they've sat there and they've said no. And then people have come back who got rejected and said, let me tell you, let me explain this a little different way. And they explain it a little more persuasive way. And the investor goes, you know what? I didn't like this the first time, but I like it the second time. Let's do it. That's what we need with China. You go to China, you go, hey, it didn't work the first time. This is getting more serious. What do we got to do? What do we got to do? What do we got to do? All you guys that, that are want to run into a, hol a nuclear war, you should talk to some World War II veterans that saw, World war that saw a nuclear holocaust. No, the, there ain't nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. The bombs now, let me just Google this for you. How powerful are modern day nuclear bombs? Let me just show you this, compared to Nagasaki. Power. You know why you're looking that up, I got to think, uh, that would be good, go back to China. I say, tell them what do you want and whatever they say, you, no matter what they say, you agree to it. But have your fingers crossed when you agree to it. Yes. That way. But I, I think their fingers would be crossed, their toes would be crossed. Look at this. This is going <laughs> to blow I mean, your mind. I'm saying have your fingers crossed. Right, I'm sure theirs would be equally <laughs> crossed. Popular Mechanics. You guys know this magazine. Popular Mechanics. Today's nuclear bombs are thousands of times more powerful than World War II. Let me, let me just reiterate. Do you... We dropped two bombs and decimated Japan. One bomb now is a thousand of those. That means that one of those bombs hits California, it decimates the state of California. When you look at radio, and did you know that when California goes down, oh, all hell gonna go loose in this world. If California was its own country, I believe it's the seventh biggest economy, or it's either the seventh or the twelfth. The state of California alone. So let's just read through this. Popular Mechanics, you can look at this article, written last year. The atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima, codenamed Little Boy and Fat Man, respectively leveled cities, killed 166,000 people in Hiroshima and 80,000 in Nagasaki. 166,000 people. That's one-tenth of a million people, roughly. Okay, those were, they were atomic fission bombs. 
okay? Now, uh, then they used, the fat man used a core of plutonium-239. In a th thermonuclear weapon, often called a hydrogen bomb, the fission process is only the beginning. Modern nuclear weapons, such as the U.S.'s B-83 bombs, use a similar fission process, but that then ignites another reaction in the secondary core of hydrogen, deuter deuterium, and tritium. So, this is all you got to know. The blast from Little Boy was the same as 15,000 tons of dynamite. 15,000 tons of dynamite. You know one stick of dynamite will blow you completely away, right? That first bomb was 15,000 tons of sticks of dynamite. You know how many di sticks of dynamite in one ton? The modern one, the modern one, okay? That, by the way, that old bomb sent a mushroom, mushroom cloud 25,000 feet in the air. The new ones, the B83 1.2 megaton is 1.2 million tons of dynamite. Are we, are we getting this? The last one was 15, it was 10,000 or 15,000. The new one is 1.2 million tons. That's all you now. I'm not, I don't know if Korea has that big of a bomb yet, but 1.2 million tons of dynamite. You want that explode in your city with radioactivity? 1.2. You know how many tons? Um, I was on a boat, and I think the modern freighter boats. You know, they have all these like cranes. That's where Walmart gets all their shit from China. They come on cranes. They hold like. 500,000 or 800,000 tons. Those huge freighters, they're the size of a city. Imagine that thing jam-packed with fucking dynamite. And it'd be two of those set in the middle of Los Angeles. Uh, it will be the end of the world as we know it. So let me just add, this is my solution. What would you do if you knew you got two choices? 5% chance it's the end of the world as we know it. Just 5%. Or uh, pay Dennis Rodman $100 million or Bill Clinton. Or fucking go give Kim Jong-il his own Disney World. Placate the guy. Placate the guy. You know what that means? Be nice to the guy. And then, if it doesn't work, then you always assassinate him last. But you better strike fast and you better hit tons of people. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Read The Art of War. The Art of War. You know what The Art of War says? And this is a Chinese book. One of the most famous books ever written. It was written by Sun Tzu thousands of years ago. He said, do not tell your enemy. And I'm paraphrasing. You don't ever tell your enemy what you're doing. You act nice. You go, hey, no big deal. You know, I used to own clubs. A lot of fights. I've seen a lot of fights. I've been in fights. I've been in the hospital. I put somebody in the hospital before in a fight. Most dangerous guys are the guys in Rome knows this. They just walk up to you, they got a little smile, pow, hit you right in the jaw and you're out. That's what we have to do if it comes to that. You start talking up a big game, that's not working. It didn't work on Saddam Hussein because he was a psychopath. The only thing that worked was, you know, we went in there, but he didn't have nuclear weapons at all. So keep the guy close, make him feel everything's good. And then pow, hit them if you have to. And when you hit, you got to wipe out the top 100 guys on that thing. So that's what I would do. In terms of warning your enemy, I'm not sure that works very well. It didn't work for Adolf Hitler. We warned Adolf Hitler. Oh, we're going to cause war. You think Adolf Hitler, if they're crazy, they're crazy. It did not work on Muammar Gaddafi. We warned Muammar Gaddafi before Libya over and over. Didn't work at all. It didn't work on Saddam Hussein. It has not worked on the Shah of Iran. It doesn't work on ISIS. You can't threaten. Just walk quietly and carry a big stick. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. So that is the long answer. Hopefully that's not too boring. Um, but do you don't want 150,000 tons of TNT hitting Guam or California. It will be Holocaust. You won't be able to come to California for 20 years. It's going to leak over into Arizona. It'll 
a lot of our food in America that you're eating comes from a lot of the food that you eat in America comes from California. Um, the banking system, a lot of it runs through California. Zach is in California. <laughs> <laughs> don't that don't is let that get out. That's what that might be the thing that causes <laughs> Dennis Rodman. That's over. his yeah, main yeah. negotiating tool. We're yeah. gonna put Zach in Guam because mm -hmm. Kim Jong Un, like, but I, I never understand why not talk to him. Why can't the president sit down with a dictator? I never got that. Well, because we don't want our president to sit down with. But the, why? Because he's an idiot. That's why well, you okay. probably get other people. <laughs> you put yes. other people. I would agree. I mean, and I'm sure there's reasons why. They don't do that, but Not if, we're, if we're going to, if we're going to, you put the right. Yeah, people. you put. Yeah, you know that one thing I liked about Obama. I didn't agree with everything Obama did, but one thing Obama did, he was the first standing president in like fifty years to visit a prison, and people are like, "You shouldn't visit a prison." Somehow you legitimize him. I'm like, "What are you fucking talking about? You're telling me we have two million Americans in prison? Okay, it's about a little under one percent of Americans are in prison." For the president to go visit it somehow makes more people going to go to prison. I mean, the, this world is getting stupider and stupider as we go. I thought that was smart. Why shouldn't the president go look at the conditions, talk to people, get his... It's a big part of being the president is the justice system. Nobody went for fucking 50 years because Reagan thought it was bad. Carter thought it was bad. Nixon thought it was bad. Oh, uh, Clinton thought, what the hell is wrong with people? Go talk in, you know where I want my leaders? You know the best generals in the military? You know where they go? They led the fight. Do you think that the general, the, the best generals, the great generals, you know MacArthur? Uh, no, I'm not MacArthur, uh, Patton. Patton? Patton was dry, there was bullets hitting his helmet and all the men respected him. I want the president and the top people in the worst places. What greater death could it be as a president negotiating world peace and something goes down and you get killed? We'll be okay. Well, another president, you got a vice president. Don't send the president. I mean, send the best guys. Real leaders go to the heart of the battle. And prison is a big problem in the United States. Send Obama went. That's, I admire him. There, there's not one cogent, intelligent, high Q argument as to why it was wrong for a president to go visit the prison system. No, but it was accepted fact for 50 years. So just because it's accepted conventional truth doesn't mean it's remotely accurate. So just because it's conventional truth that a president doesn't visit a dicta dictator for the last 50 years doesn't mean you're right because as I corrected people, America has met a dictator. His name was Joseph Stalin. And I believe Roosevelt met him two times. One was in Morocco, wasn't it? Didn't they go to Casablanca or something like that? He went. He took a boat. I believe he took a boat. The president of the United States took a boat, and it was Winston Churchill. There's a famous picture. You can pull it up, though. Winston Churchill, yeah. Joseph Stalin, and the president of the United States. And he said, listen, dictator, Joseph Stalin, we need your help, man. And it fixed it. So you go to China, you fix it, you go to Kim Jong-un, and if the dude turns out too crazy, you know, then you, de then you can always fight. Fighting is always there, man. But I have learned in business, be careful who you piss off, because people are friends of friends of friends of friends. You make life hard. Remember what Philip of Macedon, here's the picture. You think America never met with dictators? Wait, is that Truman or Roosevelt? Roosevelt. That's Roosevelt. Rose, I, don't, I think Truman might have met with Stalin later. Was it, they met on an island, Yalta, too, I think. So there's Joseph Stalin. Roosevelt was crippled because he had a disease that he didn't tell much. I think he had muscular dystrophy. Didn't he have MS or something? Or mu I, it wasn't polio? Uh, polio. Mm, he had polio when he was young, but he, he, I don't know. Maybe you're right. And then there is good old um, Winston Churchill. And they met. So Americans and that, and we won World War II. We won. Nothing happened to America. Nothing happened much. You know, you've seen the movie Dunkirk. England got attacked a little bit. Not too bad. Germany got decimated. Uh, you know, Poland got decimated. But most of America, the world was okay. We got to learn from history. Another thing that each of you have to do, a little side note. 
if you read, uh, there's a great investor. His name's Ray Dalio. He's one of the richest men in the world. Can you Google what Ray Dalio's net worth? I think it's $20 billion. He's a hedge fund ma manager. And what he said is, he said you must study history to make money because that's how you predict what you should invest in in the stock market based on the past. You figure out trends that he said the world's a cycle that goes around and around. What's his 17 name? billion? 17 billion. He made 17 billion. So that's what I'm saying. This is one thing that I'm not, I don't know much about Donald Trump, okay? He was supposed to, believe it or not, use this house here, my house, for a fundraiser. A friend asked in February before he was, last year before he was president, if he could use my house. And, and not, Rome said, no. No. I, <laughs> I'm not, it ended up not, not happening for some reason. And like I said, I'm not really Republican or Democrat. I, I find both of the parties fairly idiotic um, <laughs> and equally idiotic. But I don't know if Donald Trump knows history. I know that George Bush didn't. I'm sure he doesn't. Yeah. Well, George W. Bush, I mean, I read this fascinating book by the, there's a book, I forget it, you can Google it. It's by the guy who first interrogated Saddam Hussein. So this guy interrogated Saddam Hussein, the first person to ever talk to Saddam. And what he basically found is that Saddam Hussein and George Bush were similar in that each person was in such a small bu bubble, they didn't understand any of the repercussions. They didn't understand, for example, Saddam Hussein had basically never traveled the world. So he didn't understand that America is a horrible country to attack. Yeah, I'm gonna just tell you this. America in many ways, and this is gonna be controversial, is the nicest empire in history. Okay, trust me. Anybody who argues with that is a dipshit. Name any other empire in history that is, we are the least warlike empire. But if you attack us first, we do not give up until you are gone. Okay, so Saddam Hussein, because he didn't know anything about history, wasn't very well read. Saddam Hussein goes, well, we can threaten America enough and they'll never do anything. Well, he also never studied Texas. What state was George Bush from? Texas. Of all the places in America, that's the most likely to actually shoot you in the face. Anybody want to test this theory? Go to <laughs> Texas, sneak around an average person's house at two in the morning while his wife and kids are sleeping. The number one state likelihood you're gonna get blasted in the face is Texas. And so Saddam Hussein, absolute idiot. On the flip side, George Bush, by his own admittance, was not a big history guy. He liked baseball. Uh, and he didn't know, who's ever seen the Disney movie, Princess Bride? What is the rule? in the Battle of the Wits of Princess Bride, Zach. The first is never fight a land war in Asia? Yeah, that's it. Never fight a land war in Asia. Land war in Asia. America invaded Asia. It's never been well. It, uh, France attacked Vietnam. Before the Vietnam War, it was, there was a French war. So the French, Indochina, or whatever. As France attacked Vietnam. It didn't go well for the French. The French got their ass kicked and went back home. The Russians tried to attack Afghanistan. In, during the Cold War, they got completely destroyed by the Afghanistanis. They would shoot down, they had these big Chinook helicopters that would go down and they were just shooting them out of the air. The Russians had the worst life ever. Oh, this, let me re-put, just turn this back on. I'll do this one more time. Um, so, study history, Mr. President. Do what worked in the past it'll probably work in the future. You have to modify it a bit. So all you business people, get the damn history books out. Read Will Durant. Somebody said Bush was not from Texas. Yes, he was. He was not born in Texas, but he was a Texan. <laughs> yeah, he's a Texan. I think he was born in Connecticut or something like that because his dad was in the military. He's a Texan. It's, where, it's not where you're born. Some people say Michael Jordan's from New York. The man was born in New York. He was raised in North Carolina. He's a North Carolinian. What do you think? There are some people that might theorize that what we're seeing with the Trump presidency is the art of the deal. And that if you know the art of the deal well enough, you'll see him acting it out and what he does, such as taking an extreme position right. to then move more towards that negotiation or that, that place. Uh, 
not not taking that position and digging in and sticking with it. So uh, just throwing it out there. What if what if the whole we're going to come with fire and fury is taking that position with the understanding that that's not what I'm going to do? Um, so quick, here, quick, here, quick question. Yeah. Just from thinking that, and you didn't see the movie last night. The movie we saw? Yeah. Detroit. Detroit. Well, I was late, there. Oh, yeah, you were there. It was, okay. It was, it was birthday. his birthday. Happy birthday. Zach, <laughs> Zach so turned they, 75. When, when they took the young men in the room and act like they were going yes. to shoot him, but they didn't shoot him. And then the one guy. Look how it ended out. up. That's my point. So, yes. So the art of the deal, I'm not sure because it's like I don't, you can't run the country like you run in a business. And I don't think that same philosophy would work in terms of running a country because it's, you know, I don't think the leader of North Korea has anything to lose. I just think he doesn't want to be looked at as a punk, if you will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he's going to do whatever. And I don't think he believes in Donald Trump. I don't think he, just because of how Donald Trump handles themselves and how past presidents have handled themselves, I think they look at that. I think the country looks at that and looks how how different Donald Trump is um, to past presidents and knows there's certain things when you're in that position you can't do. I think they see that. And and I don't think they'll, I don't think they're playing with Donald Trump. I don't think they think that he's tough as he says he is and definitely not as smart as many think he is. Um, so we'll see. You but know, I we'll think see. the art of the deal, here's the thing. Bluffing's dangerous when it comes to guns. Um, for example, the police are trained to something very intelligent. When you pull your gun out, you always shoot, for the most part. That's that's the street thing too. Yeah, and here's why. And here's why. The only it, it, let me just refresh. you don't always shoot, but you're always about ready to shoot. You never pull the gun. You know that police in, for example, in California, LAPD, you're not allowed to do. Any, they say like in the movies where you do warning shots. They're like, don't do a warning shot while you're shooting up in the air. The dude shoots you in the face. Bluffing is dangerous. Uh, when you're talking about a nuclear holocaust that will disrupt human civilization as we know it, mm, do you want to bluff? Uh, well, you only want to bluff if they can't call your bluff. So what happens if this guy gets more aggressive? Now you have to attack. So I think the art of the better book, I've read The Art of the Deal by Donald Trump. It's not a bad book. I've read some of Donald Trump's business books. Are They're good. I have to say, I'm not a Trump fan or a Trump hater, but I'm ob I try to be objective. Some of his stuff is... Well, you can respect him as a business Yeah, man. some of his stuff is wrong great idea. Yeah. He's done... I mean, but, he came into some money, but clearly he's done some things right. Yeah. Donald Trump is not an idiot. George W. Bush wasn't an idiot. Every one of us has weak spots. Donald Trump got blind spots just like... But this Kim Jong-un guy... To, here's what I basically say. Do we all agree... That if we could give Kim Jong Il one billion dollars and a Disneyland and New York and NBA passes, <laughs> and put this off for ten years, that it might be worth it. Maybe the kid <laughs> dies of a heart attack. He's so fat, you know. We're probably gonna die of an auto attack uh, of a heart attack. Let the postpone this shit. If you knew, look, everybody here is gonna die. You don't want to postpone it. If you had the choice, you're gonna die today, or you could just spend have to give all your money in your bank account and get another 10 years on life. I'm resetting this thing. Keep your friends close, your enemies closer. Let me get let me read you some of this that I think is pertinent to this. Um, it's called everybody you should have iBooks. iBooks, if you want to make I'm gonna, I'm going to tell you something for millionaire mentor that I told the people that are in my paid program. I'm giving this to you for free. If you don't read a lot you're gonna make 5% of the money that you should make in your whole life, just period. If you think you're right and you're gonna argue with me, then I want you to argue with the richest men in the world because every one of them reads a lot. Number one, Bill Gates, 17 time richest man in the world. You know what he goes on vacations? He calls them reading vacations. He's made $92 billion for himself. If you're better than him, then you can argue. Number two, right now is Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos reads so many books and he has his one favorite book, The Story of Sam Walton, that it's in shreds, but he keeps his original copy and reads it over and over again. What business did Jeff Bezos start Amazon around? Books. Okay. Third richest man in the world, Warren Buffett. 
He says he reads 500 pages a day since the 1960s. Next, I think it's Zuckerberg or is close to there. Zuckerberg just started a book club and said, I need to read a book a week. So if you think that you're smarter than those four people, then don't read. If you're like me and I go, I ain't smarter than them, you not only want to have physical books, audio books, but use iBooks because they're if you have an iPhone or a Android, you can get the equivalent. Anything you want and you can get while you're on a plane. You know when planes break down and everyone bitches? I'm all excited because I got an extra hour to read. So you can go here to the Art of War and it's a free book because it was written 2,000 years ago. So you just press get book and there's like 18 different versions of it. But I want to read you some of the Art of War. It's one of my favorite books. This is the original authoritative edition. So he goes through... The book is made up of lame plans, waging war, attack by stratagem, tactical dispositions, energy, weak points, and strong, maneuvering, variation tactics, the army on the march terrain, the nine situations, attack by fire, and the use of spies. Okay? So, notice that. Spies. We should, be, we should go to the second and the third people that are next. To, and I'm sure the CIA is probably trying to do this. They're smarter than me on this. But you should be trying to pay up. Pay a billion fucking dollars to his right-hand man to kill him. Because here's why. If the right-hand man kills Kim Jong-un, then America goes, we didn't do it. So China goes, oh, we can't say America's meddling in our affairs. But we had our hand in it behind. Be cunning. Even if you're religious. You know what Jesus Christ said? Be what cunning. Close. <laughs> no. He said, be as innocent as doves but as sly as a serpent. Sly, slick, cunning, smart. So let me read you some of this, just a little bit here. If you have not read The Art of War, you are for sure making pennies on the dollar of what you should be making. This is the most read book by business men in the world and women, okay? Let me skip fast forward here. Okay, laying plans. The art of war is of vital importance to the state. It is a matter of life and death, a road either to safety or ruin. So let me show you, let me go to the part where he gets to the tactical things of how to do it. Attacking by stratagem, okay? In the practical art of war, the best thing of all is to take the enemy's country whole and intact. To shatter and destroy it is not so good. So first thing is decimating North Korea probably is not the best. It is better to, so he's saying, um, Hence, to fight and conquer in all your battles is not supreme excellence. Supreme excellence. Listen to this. Listen to this. Whatever you're fucking doing, listen to this. To fight and conquer in all your battles is not supreme excellence. Supreme excellence consists in breaking the enemy's resistance without fighting. Did he say with fighting? Without, and this is before nuclear bombs. Thus, the highest form of generalship is to balk the enemy's plans. What does that mean? To foil them, but not by force. The next best is to prevent the junction of the enemy's forces, meaning make sure North Korea and China don't join. So you get in there and you drive a wedge between them. See, you're, you're winning by trickery. You're winning, but ethical trickery. It's kind of like a white lie, okay? These are white lies that you have to do. So what we, we need to do, it says the, the general who's unable to control his irritation will launch his men into attack like swarmy ants with the result that one third of his men is slain while the town still remains untaken. So he says an angry general is the worst general. You know who you don't want to fight? A guy who's calm. You know who's a calm fighter? Conor McGregor. If you watched his first knockout of a guy named Jose Aldo from Brazil, he watched that fight. It's almost the fastest knockout in history. And Conor just goes, Conor's a southpaw, so he stands with his right hand forward and his left hand back. And Aldo came in and went, ah, and just bum rushed him. And you see Conor? 
boom, one hit right to the chin. And then Conor McGregor, after the fight, said one thing. Power, a uh, precision beats power. The angry general, the irritated general, throws his men into battle, loses his men, and loses the battle. So again, 2,000-year-old advice in that region. Sun Tzu was in the North Korea Chinese region. Back then, it was one country. It was, or not one country, it was a series of dynasties and and weird i mean china and history is very complicated i'm not an expert on it but it wasn't one country of china and then north korea that's much more recent and so those people knew how to fight in those countries and that's why going back to history here george h bush who was the father the first bush president to me was one of the great presidents recent and i'm gonna tell you why forget the fact that he said no new taxes and raise taxes. That's a BS reason he didn't get elected. First of all, he was an actual war hero, so he knew what was war was like. He was shot down. He was flying a plane, a, uh, an attack against an island in the Japanese uh, th that the Japanese held in World War II. He was shot down. He landed. Then all of the Japanese, the Japanese were kind of bastards. Usually, you don't shoot a downed pilot. The Japanese came and would were strafing him, just like. Brrr. You know, shooting them, and then luckily some of the American pilots came and shot off away the Japanese. And then he swam, and an American submarine popped up, and he got in the American submarine, and he had to stay in the submarine because it wasn't going back to land for like either one or three months. Where was he swimming to? Away from the <laughs> Japanese. No, 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 no. The Just Japanese swimming. were coming Just out. Randomly swimming. Hey, <laughs> if you land on an island and they're shooting at you. Let me tell you which way you swim. That way. They were, he swam away from them. And he survived and he lived. And he was smart. With the first Gulf War. What year was that, Zach? You know the years. 1991. 1991. The greatest uh, war in American history. How many people? Google how many people died. See, George H. Bush was not an angry general. He did not. He, like Rome said... He was quiet, and then he just did it. And he hit him with shock and awe. They had P Colonel uh, General Powell was, I think, the head of the Joint Chief of Staffs and the Joint Forces. I forget what exactly it's called. Politics is not my exact specialty, but no. How many people died? American casualties. Uh, I'm trying to get it now. Let me just pull. It. Where's my damn Siri when I need it? American casualties. All right, we're gonna do a hundred bucks to the first person who gets this. On my live stream, Facebook, Instagram, American casualties in first. Okay. Look for this. Look for that number. Usually oh, wait a minute. It says 90, 1990. Okay, but it doesn't matter. You got it wrong. Right here. Okay, we got it. Alexander, 149 American troops died. Congratulations. We're going to pay by you 100 bucks, Alexander Stan. Great. Alexandru. In the invasion of Panama in 89, 23 people died. What the hell was Operation Provide Comfort? We had one death. <laughs> but 149 deaths. If we go into North Korea, there's going to be more than 149 deaths. If there's a nuclear bomb in America, there's going to be, well, in Southern California, you would have potential 14 million deaths. Not everybody would die, no matter what, but 14 million. End of the economy as you know it. Your house would know. If you have a $300,000 house, it'll be worth 100 grand. If it's still standing. <laughs> no, no, but if you live in Nebraska, oh, if you live in London, let me tell you all you English people, if you live in England, um, you think there's a bubble now, which I think there's been a bubble in the, the economy in England for a long time. She, English people are going to be sad. They're already, French and English people are already depressed half the time because of the weather. You are really going to be depressed because England's expensive and all these people think they're rich because their 401k is up. Oh boy. So we had 149 deaths because that general, or that chief of, uh, or that president, George H. Bush, was intelligent and he ended it. Then we did the Gulf. We did the second Gulf War. How many people have died in the second Gulf War? 
or the in Iraq and Afghanistan. Under 2000, but no, saying. no, no, no. But overall, because we're still there. George H. Bush left. He read the book, Never Have a Land War in Asia. Let's take a few questions and we're going to wrap up. That's good. We're doing about hour right, and a half. Right now it's saying 4,424. No. Count casualties. There's like 17,000. Do casualties, which is also people with limbs blown off. I mean, whether you die or you get your face blown off, it's bad. Okay? We shouldn't. We should not uh, differentiate. Think about Vietnam War. That was the worst war for America. So was North. So was the Korean War. 1950s, 60s. Lyndon B. Johnson, JFK. These guys didn't know what the hell they were doing. Breton, uh, especially LBJ. There's a badass book I just read called. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's the name of a city. It's called Huey. H U E, but a weird letter. It's the story of a city in Vietnam. Yeah, the Tet Offensive was there. It's a nightmare. It's a damn nightmare. You know one guy? I was reading crazy. He got shot right in the crotch. You know in World War II, one of the most common injuries for pilots was getting their balls shot off because people would shoot up. You'd be flying a plane, so they used to install metal plates there. Who wants to have that happen to them? What are we at? Did you not find anything? Well, what I was looking at, they broke it down by so many groups, reporters, Cat, yeah, Ukrainians, casualties. Iraq war. Here we go. Journalists. 31,000. Okay, so it's 35,000. Oh, here counting we go. 35,000. <laughs> Zach, how do you not see that? It's at the top. What did you Google? Casualties Iraq war. What did you Google? <laughs> Casualties in second Gulf war. Well, Learn how to use Google better. Somebody said they've been to Iraq twice. Okay, let's do some open Q&A on any subject. Um, Ty, why are you allowed to drink, but Kate has to detox? <laughs> you mean, why am I allowed to drink the Mountain Valley spring water? Okay, dumb question number one. I'm not drinking. I will say the f Donald Trump has finally made me nervous. Oh, something, really? Something really? I found out that's actually is a little, I think, odd. Uh, I saw a report today that he gets two reports yes, a day. I saw that of positive news yes. about him. So oh, I've heard that a while including ago. just yeah. pictures of himself <laughs> looking powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and people who work for him have to like go around the table and say good things about him. <laughs> oh, that, <laughs> that and he has does. a news station that just reports everything that, that good. Makes me nervous. <laughs> yeah, but I want to tell you something. If you not not nervous, but that's, positive that, reinforcement. That's a little, if you guys think there's a good a politician weird. out there, who's better? These guys are all, duh. Hillary Clinton, you think, would have been better than yep, Trump? Yep, yep, I do. <laughs> oh, I, I, I do. She might have been better in this situation, but, oh, man. I don't know. She's all about reset buttons. That's not exactly the, the strongest diplomatic move yeah, to there's, take there's, a target well, reset. Don, how come Donald Trump will meet with Putin and he won't meet with Kim Jong-un? Because he has business affairs in Russia. Yeah, but I'm saying Putin's a dictator. But he has Please. business and he's making money. How That's long has Putin been the damn president? Uh, uh, off like, and on. No, no, but when did Putin come to power? Anytime you're in power in a country for more than a decade... That's called a dictator. You think it's a free election there? Come on. <laughs> Russia. Russia hasn't had normal politics in 500 years, man. Russia politics, my God. Uh, if you're Russian, I don't know what's going on with your guy. You think American politics are bad. You got Ivan, the terrible Bolshevik revolution, Trotsky, Lenin, Stalin, Khrushchev. Zach, how long is it going to take you to find this? Man, answer? no, well, they just got it. They've got... Um, <laughs> Secretary of the Security Council, leader of United right. Russia, chairman. When did Putin come to power? He's the 34th and 38th prime minister of Russia. When did, okay, that took too long, Zach. In, In 99, he came to power. So he's been a dictator for 18 <laughs> years, but we still meet with him. Meet with the damn Kim Jong-un guy, please. Okay, uh, somebody said, Christ, is Zach still looking? <laughs> 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 All right, question and answers. Let's go. Let's take Quinn question. Hillary, oh, I don't know what that's it. Favorite lesson you learned from the art of war? I just read it to you. In the first page, the wise general wins the battle without fighting. 
by keeping your enemies close and your enemy and uh, keeping your friends close and your enemies much closer. These people shouldn't know. Look, you know what I like in mil- this is how I would be. There's a bad guy out there. You send somebody to become his best friend. They become best friends for a year. Security gets a little lax. The bodyguards, you take them to Magic Mountain and you push them off the fucking roller. I don't know. He tripped over the thing. No war. War averted. Your guy, who was your undercover espionage guy, was like, I don't know what happened. We're best friends. That's how you fight war in a modern war. What do you think? It's two. There's 150,000 ton TNT nuclear bombs. Push the guy off a fucking bridge. Did you see how um, Kim Jong-un assassinated his own brother? While his brother, they put a wet towel of cyanide over his face. There's a guy in America we should have damn sent to North Korea. He's dead now. But if you ever saw the movie, um, one of the greatest books. If you want to read a book, I was gonna, you're going to sit down and you should read this book. Iceman, Richard Kokinski. Ooh, number one assassin for the mafia in American history. This is what Richard Kokinski would do. He found out that cyanide... One like millionth of a whiff of it makes people have a heart attack and you can't tell why they died. Unless the coroner actually checks for cyanide, it just looks like he died of a heart attack. So this is what he would do. People would pay him 10 grand. He would take a spray bottle like Windex. He would put a drop of cyanide and water in. He would check the wind. He said, make sure you check the wind. So I ain't going back at you. <laughs> and he would walk. He would go up to him. He would get a picture. He would stalk him for three days. So he would follow him. He would see, okay, this guy goes to work at 9 a.m., comes home at 5 p.m. Then at the very end, he had a van with no windows. Be careful, guys, with van with no windows. He was a big guy. He was like Rome. He was, uh, I think, six foot six and about 300-pound guy. Very strong white guy. Really strong. When they finally arrested him, they had to put leg shackles on his wrist because handcuffs didn't fit. And he would just walk up to people, tap you on the shoulder to make sure that you were the right person and just go and walk away. He killed 30 people like that. Send the cyanide man. Just have him walking down the street. <laughs> you put a bounty on his head. What if you put a billion dollar bounty on his head and you drop pamphlets in North Korea? Anybody who kills this man, we will wire you $100 million. You turn your whole country against you. That's stealth. That's, that's, my, I don't know if dropping pamphlets is very that's what stealth. They used to do. I think they'll get that information. No, no, they will get that. No, 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 but they will get that. But the point is, what if they're not dropped by an American plane? I'm looking for my dog very stealthily. No, but what if hung up pamphlets no, no, no. around. No, no, no. Zach is missing the point. I'm just kidding. What if it's dropped by a plane with Chinese markings on it? And now America goes, the damn Chinese trying to kill the North Koreans. What if it's dropped with a Pakistani one? We don't like pa- we don't like pa- Pakistan. So you'd rather start a war with... You won't start a war because how can they prove America did it? No, I'm just saying they might... Start a war with Pakistan. Let Pakistan and North Korea blow. They ain't going to attack each other. <laughs> Kim Jong Un is not going to attack Pakistan. I mean, I always said send the Chechnins. Send, there's two people you should be worried about in this life. Never date a girl who is from Albania or Chechnya. Because those dudes who are her brothers are killers. There's huh. some countries that are killers. So I'm like, why not pay the damn Chechnins? Be like, get this guy off. We'll, we'll give you a billion dollars. You got to remember, dictators of countries like Chechnya, like these countries, they like money. They're bastards. You think, what did, what did Saddam Hussein do? He had gold statues of himself. He had beautiful women all the time. Give the guys what they want. Let them be Hugh Hefner in his own world. So I'm just saying, stealth, art, win the battle, but nobody knows. The guy just goes to sleep. Do you know how many times that's happened in history? That we've just silently assassinated somebody and no one ever knew what happened. That's how you do it. I think it's 342. <laughs> All right. Other questions. Uh, real fans watch when there's no giveaway. Well, we got a lot of people watching with no giveaway. Sovereign countries are not allowed to assassinate. Of course. We won't, we won't do it. <laughs> Money will exchange hands in dark countries. They'll move around. Hey, you fight fire with fire, boy. This is not something to joke around. This is white lie time. This is gray time. This is uh, 
This is or extraordinary. You pay the Israelis, you pay the Chechnyans, but it goes through an account of an account of an account of an account. It comes from Madagascar through Taiwan through, and it's just <laughs> like we don't know. You don't know anybody who doesn't know that that's how the world already works is a moron. You don't think that's how, do you know why America hasn't been attacked since 9-11? Let me tell you the actual, one of the theories. I'm not an absolute expert, but I've read some fascinating stuff on this. America pays motherfuckers so much money that nobody's safe. So let's say there's an ISIS guy, or let's go before ISIS. When we had, the, when we had uh, like the, not the Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda. They would go. And they would go to a village and find the, where the guy was. They would drop a person in and they would just start going everywhere. I'll give you 50 million bucks so you kill this guy. 50 million, 50. They were dropping, dudes were dropping like flies. It cost America, you know how much money America's GDP is? America's an $18 trillion GDP. Our taxes are roughly, our tax intake is about $4.6 trillion. We don't even notice 100 million bucks. All we notice is there has not been attack on American soil since 9-11. It's been 17 years in a month since America was attacked. Why? Money. Money. Use the damn money. What do you think money's for? Philip of Macedon. Money. He ended all wars by just making everybody, invite everybody to a party. Who know Kim Jong Il? If Kim Jong Un likes, have a little get together, Kim Jong. If he likes <laughs> Dennis Rodman, he probably likes. People love movie stars. Send freaking four other movie stars there. Say you want to be here. And for those of you that think this is too crazy, you never start. Who knows the story of the hostage negotiations that took place in the Middle East in the seventies? Do you know this? You mean Argo? The airplane. Yeah. Multiple times, celebrities have been sent in, or stars. Bill Clinton's done it. Carter, former presidents, have been gone in. Um, who's the other celebrity? Can you Google George it? Clooney. Not George Clooney. That was an actual movie. That Muhammad Ali was sent. Thank you. Burt Reynolds. They sent Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Send Muhammad Ali. Someone Muhammad Ali went to Iraq. Morgan Freeman. <laughs> so, Beatrice said you're a very intelligent guy. Well, I'm not sure about that, but I appreciate it. Okay, question. 1969, moon landing, real or fake? Um, we've been to the moon. That's what I'll say. And the world's not flat. <laughs> uh, what was the best war to learn from and why? World War One, Most important war of our time. The only war that really affects you in terms of the initial domino? World War One. It caused World War Two, which caused the Cold War, which caused North Korea, which caused Vietnam War which caused uh, Afghanistan, all the trouble in Afghanistan, which caused the first Gulf Wars, which caused the fall of the German, uh, the Berlin Wall, 1989. All this is all from World War I. So be careful. You push the first domino down, boy. And this is about to be another domino. Don't push dominoes that you can't stop. Ty, do you think your friend across the table looks like Dr. Dre? Do you ever get that room? No. It's Cameras, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> He's a lot bigger than Dr. Dre. Since you're a history buff, what should we invest in now? Well, here's the thing about dynamite. I, <laughs> why does it sound like someone's peeing in here? There's some water. I think going. it's Mel over there. Mel, God, these mics <laughs> pick up everything. Um, what should you invest in? You know, ultimately, here's the thing about history. You're not going to find the exact investment. Like, there's no <laughs> time in history where you invest in <laughs> Apple because of But you look for trends of how the economy is going to go. So, for example, I, I will tell you that in my opinion, and I could be wrong, there will be a recession, assuming there's no nuclear war, in the next 18 months of some, some kind. I don't know if it will be as bad as 2008. I doubt it will be as bad as 1929, the Big Depression. There'll be something. And why do I know that? Because if you study the economy for the last 100 years, about every 8 to 12 years, there is a recession. It's normal. It's called a period of contraction. The definition of a recession is two quarters of negative GDP growth, right? So there's a And why do you want a contraction? Well, let me ask you this. Is it always good to gain weight or is it good sometime to lose some weight? Now, I know that's not a perfect analogy, 
but it is an accurate analogy because sometimes when you don't get enough food, your body is forced to prune off cells, fat deposits that aren't healthy for you. And sometimes in an economy, there is unnatural growth. There's houses worth way more money, businesses that aren't valuable in 2001 that have no revenue selling for billions of dollars. And so a recession wakes everybody up. And by the way, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say another good example would be an erection because it's good to have the growth, but you clearly don't want it more than four hours because apparently that's. Zach had a bad incident with Viagra. It's yesterday. bad. <laughs> so you need the, the, the contracting. Someone said the lighting the... is hella dope in that room. Okay, let's go to a few more questions. Oh, we, yeah, we're getting to this Joe Rogan length of time. Man, these are coming in fast on YouTube. Ty, what is your thoughts about the... Oh, man. These are... Boy, we're pretty active here on YouTube. What do I think of Bitcoin? Let's talk about Bitcoin for a second. One of the most common questions I get. Somebody's going to lo- lose a lot of money in Bitcoin. Somebody's going to make a lot of money. If you can tell the future, you'll know which one you are. Things outside of your control that have tremendous volatility, I personally stay away from. Even though I know... I'm going to look back and someone's going to become a multimillionaire from Bitcoin, but I already know how to become a multimillionaire. So I ain't chasing, I'm not chasing stuff that's too high risk. You can also buy enough lottery tickets and win the lottery, but it's not good at odds. So my opinion on Bitcoin is it's a zero sum game in some ways, meaning some for every person who wins, somebody loses. It's a little dangerous. The girl is cute behind as opposed to Zach, I'm not sure what to say. So again, I'm not gonna discourage you from Bitcoin, I'm just saying, don't invest your life savings in Bitcoin, okay? Uh, She reminds me of Christina Pachucci. Who is that? Google that, Christina Pachucci. Ty, how do you make money at 17? I've been applying everywhere. I'm gonna tell you how you make money at 17, 16, 65, 43, be an impressive person who's learning and is a learning machine. You always impress people. I can't tell you how many powerful people I've may, met when I was just starting out that because I was a curious person, I caught their eye. And they said, hey, you're, int- you're different than the rest of the people. Come back to my office tomorrow. We'll talk more business. Okay? There's, when you don't stand out from the crowd, there's no sure bet for anything. When you stand out from the crowd... No matter what happens to you, you can always make it. If I lost all my money, as long as my brain is intact and my health and sanity is there, um, I'll be able to rise back up. Maybe I won't be able to rise up to where I am now, but you, I'll be okay. As long as I got my brain and freedom and things like that, because I know how to learn quickly, I'll be ahead of the game. So be a learning machine. This will make you wealthy over time. Okay, won't make you the richest person in the world, might not make you a millionaire, but to wealthy is meaning you have enough money to do the things you really wanna do, and you're not always in scarcity mode. Would I run for president? Dude, that is something I just, I know a lot of people say they wouldn't run for president, I really mean it. I I don't see the upside. Um, Maybe when I was like 90 years old or something, I just see it as a horrible job where you base, just imagine this, when you're the president, Everyone who elected you is kind of like your boss because they put you in power. And in America, they got free speech. Most people are idiots. Would you want to have 320 million people telling you how to do your job? I I mean, in America, there's 320 million people. There is not 320 million smart people in America. And not just America. I love America, but there's dumb people in every country, including America. So I don't like anything where I'm forced into a position where I have to li- listen to idiots. And so you have power grabs in Washington, D.C. So unless there's something I'm missing, I don't see the upside. I see it being, I, I, I wouldn't, you know, people that are like Warren Buffett has the ear of the president or used to with Obama. Things like that could be interesting. I wouldn't mind trying to help out a country. I don't know if I'm qualified to do that, but man. No, is my answer. Ty is on fire tonight. 
Kate could run. Yeah, I'll vote for Kate. North Korea is not an enemy. DC is the enemy. Let me give you some advice from probably the smartest, wisest man alive on the planet that I know of right now, Charlie Munger. Avoid extreme ideologies. Those of you who think America is extremely evil, you're an idiot. Those of you who think America is absolutely perfect, you're also an idiot. Okay. Can we have some fucking normal people on the planet that realize there's no perfection on planet Earth? I mean, God. People who love Hillary Clinton too much automatically go into moron status for me. People who love Donald Trump too much automatically you're a moron. I have zero respect for you. I don't know how to change that in my brain. I'm just like, you're dumb. Um, if you think America is this evil empire, you know nothing of true evil empires. Genghis Khan used to conquer countries, take all the all of the leaders of the country, build a tent on top of them, put wooden floors on top of them, and eat while they slowly suffocated under him while he raped their wives and daughters. He did that, and the Genghis Khan, and they did this for a long time. Um... In India, some of the some of the rulers of India in ancient India, there was a guy I forget his name. It's like starts with a K, but he was known as the bloodthirsty, and he used to make there was mountains of people's skulls. They crucify people, burn people, set them on fire. America doesn't attack basically anybody who doesn't mess with them. America's a little bit like Rome in my experience. Rome is just one of those dudes. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Rome is not that aggressive, but if you pushed him or something, in fact, we were at a party that cracked me up. I went to a party. I don't know what's, I told you people are stupid, right? So we go to this party in Hollywood. This was last year. Remember? I don't know if you remember this, Rome. We had to park on this damn hill. It was way up in the Hollywood Hills. Jake Paul, I think was there as one. It was like an Instagram influencer party. And I, I usually, you know, they invited me. So I stopped by. So we drive up the hill, then we have to walk up the hill. We get to the place. So the dude, there was like a VIP band. This is a house party, okay? It's not big. He puts a band on, and then Rome just walks in behind me. This It was a small bouncer, not a big guy, probably about Zach's size. What are you, Zach? 6'1"? Yeah. Zach's 6'1", 200 pounds. The dude grabs Rome. <laughs> ran, Rome goes, Get your hands off me. Just threw his arm. This dude, I see out of the corner of my eye, I'm like, oh, no, Rome killed a man. But I was thinking, what possessed the guy to just take his job that seriously, making $75 probably at a party, to grab a 315-pound guy? I just don't understand. I'm people. thinking he put cocaine in his eye. <laughs> he put <That's>, cocaine. <laughs> no, he. Right. Yeah, it's the only power, reason I could Power see got to his head. So America is like that. So this guy who says that D.C., Washington D.C. is the, it can get a lot of worse. Let me just tell you this: if Putin ever is in power, then you'll you're gonna want to move. You're gonna be like wishing for the days that Donald Trump is not worse than Putin. I know some people say that he is, he is not. Putin. If you're gay under Putin, I mean, dude, come on, man. Russia's, I've been to Russia. No offense to any Russians. It's one of the least favorite countries I've ever been to. I love the history. I know some fascinating Russia people. I love chess. Um, I love Russian literature. You guys have produced some of the greatest literature of all time. Dostoevsky and all, I mean, just great stuff. You guys have been through a lot. The average Russian is a great person, but your leadership has put your country, literally has been a nightmare since uh as far as we as i go back studying history past the 15 at uh, 15 like 20s they had ivan the terrible you know th th this is the, these guys names don't even he's ivan the terrible it's not donald trump the terrible well, these the are a rough time the son he's <laughs> donald trump is not as bad as putin man come on putin so uh, even if he is if if you think donald trump's as bad as putin he's not unchecked Donald Putin has been the legally effect, uh, elected guy since 1999. Oh, yeah. That sounds like real free elections. 19, now, imagine, now, if Donald Trump is in power in 2039, then I'll be like, something messed up with Donald Trump. All right. Let's just go to the next one. Uh, what do you think about having no president? You can't do it. Constitution. Have I interviewed Robert Greene? No. But he got some good books. Who's the chick, though? That's Kate. I, okay. Or Zach. 
Where is a good place to buy the book Art of War? It's absolutely free on iBooks and Android. <laughs> so, or you can get it on Amazon for under five dollars. Um, you can get versions that have the translations. Poor Charlie's Almanac, another great book. Man, YouTube is hot today, boy. Trump is just too honest. Politicians are complicated. You know what Mark Twain said about people? He said, humans are like the moon. All of us. We have our dark side and our light side. I promise you this. If any of our lives were fully projected on a screen for the whole world to watch, we'd have some very embarrassing moments where our dark side showed, and we don't want people to know about them. So I bet you if you go deep into Donald Trump, he got some dark side, and I bet you there's a part of Donald Trump that's done a lot of good for people. And it's the same with Hillary Clinton. Probably the same with Putin, even though less so. I think Putin, some countries are very Machiavellian. They have uh, My theory is that certain countries that have too much trauma um, have actual deep-seated psychological problems very prevalent in society. So I think that Eastern Europe and Russia and communist countries, they had tremendous trauma. And psychologists and scientists know tremendous tra trauma alters the brain changes your prefrontal cortex it changes your empathy levels so you, you have countries that are more psychotic than others absolutely and you have countries like sweden and stuff like that switzerland has never been to a war they did you know they're not hostile people so i think that countries do take on i'm not prejudiced by race and color and things like that but how you're raised affects your behavior and anybody who argues that is also an idiot so I think that there's countries where people are raised. It, it's kind of like, for example, I'm a businessman. If I ever have to do a negotiation with anybody who's from the Middle East, another businessman, American citizen, but he's born in the Middle East, I know that I'm in for a nightmare because I was born in America where we don't negotiate that much. Now, I'm not prejudiced against Middle Eastern people. One of my business partners was born in Iran, and he's one of the smartest guys I know, trustworthy, like I, I so I don't, I'm, but... Even he admits, he said his mother still negotiates at the grocery store with the cash <laughs> register lady. He's like, come on, you know, the baloney says $3 to give it to two. And the lady's like, this is America. It's a price tag. I barcode. So there's differences in how cultures approach stuff. And for me as a businessman, I don't know Middle Eastern negotiation over everything. So I don't do that well in those situations. So I think there's cultural issues. Anyway, I don't know how I got on the subject. Uh, do you think Uber makes good money? It's not profitable yet. It's worth $68 billion last time I checked. But Uber is very valuable because it is a brand that everybody in America now knows. For, I'd say it has 90% awareness. If you, 9 out of 10 people in America will know Uber. 90-year-olds um, won't know them, and maybe somebody in the Ozarks of Missouri or somebody. But most people know. So they're very valuable. They have tremendous revenue. They raised, what is it, seven or $12 billion, the most ever for a private company. So it's, it's fascinating. Uber's bubble has popped. Not really. It's still worth a lot of money. Avoid extreme ideologies. Kate, I dare you to tickle Ty right now. Donald Trump likes to project male dominance, but next to Putin, he seems weak. Oh, I don't know about that. I would call Donald Trump many things. I don't think he's a weak guy. I doubt he's weak. He borrowed a billion dollars and personally guaranteed it and lost the billion and then came back without committing suicide. He ain't weak. Donald Trump is probably a narcissist. That's the best. Um, probably. Yeah. I mean, cycle, <laughs> I don't know him. I, it, I, I've i learned. One thing I learned in Hollywood, everything TMZ and all this shit says about people is basically false. Because whenever I meet celebrities and get to know them as people, it's almost they're never I mean, their birthdays are different than their Wikipedia. Be I do agree with Trump in that there's a lot of fake news. I will say that. I don't call it fake news. I would just say there's a lot of misleading news. So I try to reserve judgment. For I try to meet somebody. You can tell more in five minutes of meeting somebody than you can tell in 6,000 TMZ articles about them. And you find out the truth. I can tell you in Hollywood, the people that I think are assholes... And some of them are the ones that everybody thinks. I can think of an athlete, an athlete that I know that is one of the biggest athletes in the world that is has this nice guy projection, and he is an asshole. LeBron James. 
No, I don't know LeBron James. Okay. I'm not going to say. It's not the guys you see on my social media. Tom way. Brady. I don't know Tom Brady. Oh. Is it Chris Paul, you know, become a friend of mine. These guys are all awesome. It's not somebody you've seen on my Snapchat. But there's, and I know another guy that it projected to be a big asshole that I've met, been around, nicest person in the world. So, yeah. The media is, I'm going to tell you why. The, it's not the media that's wrong. It's the, so there's this, <clears throat> this is important to understand. Charlie Munger has this concept called beware of perverse incentives. He said perverse incentives will change a good person to a bad person. So for example, if you are an honest person at your job and you get paid by the hour, 10 bucks an hour, 20 bucks an hour, 50 bucks an hour, versus if you get paid for commissions, who do you think works harder on making money? Commission salespeople or people who make a salary? Well, they did a study on, I forget what it was. It was like a, it was a, there was a car company that, you know, if you have a little break in your glass window, they would come and, and like fix the glass window and they stopped paying salary to the people who would go fix the glass and they paid them a hundred dollars per windshield that they did. And the average person did like double the windshields per day. So whenever you pay the media, by eyeballs because they get paid by eyeballs is advertising whenever you do that you've created a perverse incentive for them to make up stuff to get more eyeballs they're people too every news reporter and every news uh, and every person who owns a news station is just like you they want to make money you know why not fudge a little bit upon this headline I knew the media was full of crap when they said about Donald Trump. This is what pissed me off. This is when I, I started to get on Donald Trump's side. This was in the beginning of when he won. They said, mass exodus from the State Department when Donald Trump became president. Max. And in the opening blurb was like, the if, there has never been more people leaving the State Department in, since for 50 years. They've lost all confidence. They're just resigning. Then, you know what the truth was? Four people were fired by Donald Trump. So first of all, they didn't quit. Four is not a mass exodus in a department that has 100,000 employees. So the media, what do you think is going to make them more money? An article that says four people are fired by Donald Trump out of 100,000, 900, uh, 996,000 remain. Or 99,996 remain versus mass exodus. So the media is not very moral people. They're just like everybody so else. Do you think the news is, is, is more fake or more real? And in, in terms of Donald Trump, I would agree that the media does sensationalize things and so on and so forth. But a lot of his ridicule comes from stuff that he says and stuff that he does. And so it's not fake. It's stuff that he says on Twitter, on his own Twitter account, that's not hacked or anything. It's just him saying different idiotic things. And that's not fake news. That's real news. I've never heard the term fake news until he became president. And I'm not saying it doesn't exist. Well, that's why I just said I don't like fake news. I like misleading news. Because I don't think the news is all fake. And, and, and so I totally agree with you. But I'll say this. Um, as I said about... If you hate Donald Trump and you're a reporter, didn't the art of war say wage war without them knowing? Why don't the reporters become very close with Trump, get him to spill the beans to them, record the shit, and get him impeached? Because they're not smart. They're emotional. And what did he say? The irritated general loses and loses his army. Be smart. There's a saying that Alan Nation told me. When you play poker and you're sitting at the table, and after 30 minutes you haven't figured out who the sucker at the table is, you're the sucker. So don't be the sucker. Let me tell you who's the sucker. Media. Donald Trump embarrassed the media. The day of the election, I woke up, I looked at, I think, the Washington Post or something online. 93% confidence Hillary would win. 93. They were off. I could understand like 59, 41. 90. Three percent. So he won, and he exposed 
that the media is just like everybody else. The one thing I don't particularly love about reporters is awesome. Oftentimes reporters act like they're some great bastions of truth. Why don't you just be honest? You a businessman just like me. I'm a businessman. You know, some people don't like my tactics. Oh, Ty, you show a Lamborghini in your videos. Are you promising everybody else will be a Lamborghini? No, I don't say watch my videos. You'll become a Lamborghini, but I mean, you'll become, <laughs> you'll, yeah, you'll become a Lamborghini. You'll become a Lamborghini <laughs> owner. No, but there is a certain implied message in my marketing, which is here's what worked for me. So some people will be like, oh, that's slick marketing. Well, there's nothing wrong with being slick. Even Jesus Christ said, be as gentle as serpents, but as sly, I mean, gentle as doves and as sly as serpents. And is it marketing or is it just real talk? With Trump? Oh, no, me? No, with you. I'm saying it's like, yeah, I try, but you know, people break me down too. I'm obviously not at the level of a Donald Trump analysis, but people try to break me. Every day I get a Google report of people writing articles on me. Oh, it's a scam. Hey, man, they don't realize they're the sucker in the room because they're my free PR. Never be your enemy's free PR. I am fairly confident that the media got Donald Trump elected. People were so pissed at the media that they're like, fuck it, anybody but the entrenched Democratic Party and the entrenched media, and they put Trump in because they didn't like the alternative. So what the media should have done is been nicer to Trump, be more accurate, and really pin it down. The, the, the irritate, I just read you in The Art of War, the irritated general loses. The media is full of irritated people. Be objective. They should say way more of the things that Trump's doing well. Because look, you're smart. You're watching this. I'm assuming you're intelligent. Okay? You wouldn't be watching this. You'd be watching, you know, some playing video games if you were. Okay? Don't you respect somebody more? who says, you know what, here's what I think Donald Trump's doing right. And you list off things that are factual. And then you say, but I got real problems with these other things. My answer, I do. I go, well, that's somebody I can trust. It's like an impartial judge. Do you trust a judge who's crooked, who, ne who hides the good things? So what the media is doing, if they hate Trump, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. The more they fight Trump, the more this dude is in power. They better watch out. They're going to put him in power for four more years. If he solves the North Korean crisis correctly, which the only correct answer is no violence, no war, no attack on America, maybe violence in North Korea, but none here. He's going to be a hero. If the economy continues to go and I'm wrong and there is no recession in the next year and a half, he can be a damn hero. If the media keeps being idiotic, and here's how you know how many people like Donald Trump. Look at his tweets. Some of his tweets are getting 130,000 likes in one day. I knew he'd be the president because Hillary Clinton got exactly a third of his. On average, Hillary Clinton got 20 to 30,000 likes. I predicted his that Trump would win and he'd get 100,000. Likes are like votes, man. It's electronic voting at the poll. So what I would do if I wanted to get rid of Trump, I'd keep my friends close, my enemies closer. I'd start to become his friend. You know, have anybody seen Game of Thrones? Little Feather. The two in Game of Thrones, there's two spies. I forget the other. There's one guy who's bald. Uh, I'm, I'm on season two. <laughs> Zach, no. they're already in there. Oh. There's Little Feather, and they're both these sly guys that take down empires and bring them up. It's so cool to watch them because I'm like, please, can we get these dudes to go over to North Korea? They're all these like sly guys like, hey, Kim Jong-un, you know what? We got something great for you. We don't know. And then they <laughs> kill him. He fell off the roller coaster. Man, you push this dude off a roller coaster. Okay. What did you stop it at? 90? Yeah, uh, 99. At 99 automatically. I think we're about done. I'm trying to try a three-hour one, but we haven't quite been three. Kate is too hot. I'm glad that all this intellectual talk is not lost on some people. Go, Kate's hot. You have a record screenshots of uh, your live stream. <laughs> I think it's because of my, my new shirt. <laughs> yeah. Hey, my, this, my cousin Maya's a Leo.
So if you believe in astrology, Leo's like attention. So I years ago I I got a yellow Ferrari, my first Ferrari. This is, I don't have it now, but it was uh, this is in two thousand probably eight, eight or nine. So I had this Ferrari, and she goes, I want to I want to drive in it. So she gets in it, and we're driving just around the block. She wanted she'd never been a Ferrari, and she goes, <laughs> I think I what did she say? I think she goes, my I think this outfit is good. I'm like, why? She goes. Everybody is looking at me. She said her hair is good. She had just got one on the hairdresser. I'm like, she forgot she was in a yellow Ferrari. <laughs> Only a Leo, Zach. Zach's yeah. a Leo, too. How much do you believe in horoscopes? I don't believe horoscopes is where you tell the future. I don't much look at those. I always found the birth chart stuff to be funny. Somebody said North Korea needs to. No, that, that faded away. Love Leos, <laughs> somebody put. What do I think about leverage? So leverage in finance and business is borrowing money. Only borrow money on tested ideas or real estate or to invest in your brain. So sometimes people taking out loans for college can be good. Although college is becoming more and more inefficient as a tool to get you a job. It used to work well in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. It was very effective to get you a job to have a college degree. Now it's mm, now you need more of a graduate degree or you become an entrepreneur. So somebody said usury. No, it's not usury. Usury is an outdated concept. Some religions still have them, but I don't agree with that. The reason you charge interest is because two reasons. The reason credit card companies, I think, are ethically correct in charging you interest or a bank on your home, two reasons. One, they're giving you money that they could do something else with. So why would they do that for free? Why would they give you 100 grand to buy a house and then you just give them back a hundred grand 30 years later. Is that fair? <laughs> you had a hundred grand your, to use on something else and someone takes it and gives you nothing? So no, it's not usury. Secondly, there's something called inflation in the world, which means the value of money goes down. When my step-grandfather, Charles, was young, he told me with, for a dime, he would buy all the groceries. He would go to, for the day, I guess they went shopping every day, they didn't have refrigerators back then. He was born in 1917. So in like the 20s, his mom would give him a dime, a dime. He'd go to the grocery store and get like a meal. Okay. Inflation means a dime now won't even get you bubble gum. So you have to be paid interest because over time, the value of the money you lend out is losing value. That's inflation. And so uh, there's nothing wrong with charging interest or paying interest. It, you have to, sometimes interest is a little high, but there's a lot of laws in America. You can't charge more than basically 30% interest for the most part on most loans. There's some payday loans and certain loans that are higher. But Ty prediction on the state of human civilization 100 years. No one can predict 100 years. That's my answer to that. All this stuff about global warming and 50 year projections, it's all garbage. Worry about, now if global warming says in the next five years it's gonna be a problem, I, you can project out five years. You cannot project 50 years. Every 50 year prediction in the history of mankind has been so far off, okay? I, I don't know what'll happen with global warming. I don't understand it. I mean, I tend to agree with scientists. So if a ton of smart scientists say global warming is re real, I would tend to believe it. There's some smart people that don't believe it, but <clears throat> perverse incentives. <clears throat> Zach, Zach is more Republican, so he doesn't really believe in-, in uh, Science. He doesn't believe in science, <laughs> which is factual. Come on, factual, now. come on, which is come factual. on. That's not Instagram's going to be over in 25 fair. seconds. So um, we're probably going to wrap up now. And this was a solid, what do we do? 90, 120 minutes. Oh, that's two hours. That's two hours. That ain't bad. We'll see how people like this. Um, what about Nostradamus theories? Who knows if Nostradamus, Nostradamus, they might have changed the books. <laughs> I know. You know how to make good predictions? I'm going to tell you exactly how to make good predictions. Um, the, the way that you can look like a Nostradamus is you tell somebody you predicted something, but you, <laughs> you just write it after it happened. There's so much fake shit on that. People ain't predict my, Wikipedia. You just add it, man. You we just change, add it. Change a lot of so things. So I do think I. You know, it's funny. This morning I was actually thinking about this. Do you think people are psychic? And I do. This is a weird thing. I tend to be scientific, 
I do think there is something else out there that some people are connected into. So if you're a Christian, okay, they would call that prophecy. People who can who who predict the future. Somebody like Jesus Christ was a prophet. If you're a Muslim, you believe that Muhammad was a prophet. Okay, um, many religions have prophets. So I, I tend to think that that's even though some people would say I'm crazy. My atheist grandma would say I'm crazy. I think there is something else that people tap into. Have you ever had a dream and then it comes true? I mean, that's weird. And there's some people that do that consistently. So there's possibly a world out there. Uh, I mean, look, even astrophysicists, top scientists, say that it's a possibility that time is an illusion, that everything's happening at once, that we are so, our brain is so slow, we only perceive things as happening through time. And a lot of smart people believe this. There's also people who believe in what's called a multiverse, a multiple universes, meaning there's a world that exists that has every infinite possibility. So there's a world universe existing right now where Hillary Clinton won and Donald Trump lost, where Kim Jong-un launched the missiles and where he didn't. One where I'm putting my hand here and putting my hand here. Now, it's too hard for our brains to compute that because that would be literally trillions upon trillions of permutations and combinations but some of the smartest people in the world believe in a multiverse. You can, you can Google it. I mean, smart people, Stephen Hawking kind of people. So what that means to me is, is there the possibility of being psychic? Probably, you know, probably some people are psychic. Who built the ancient pyramids? I don't know. I do think most of the theories about this is BS. I don't think America's hiding alien UFOs and all eh. There's too many cameras out there. If there was a real alien somewhere, it's just like there's probably not a Loch Ness monster. <laughs> uh, you know, probably not. What's the other one? Bigfoot. The Bigfoot. <laughs> Unless you saw the movie Bigfoot. What was that movie? You ever seen that movie? Uh, Howard and the... Oh, Harry and the Hendersons. Harry and the yeah. Hendersons. Yeah. It was a documentary. I believe. <laughs> Zach thought it was real. <laughs> hey, when am I going to be your chef again? Who is that? Oh, it's Nikki. How you been? Somebody said best mentor ever. I entered the multiverse. <laughs> Somebody said maybe the monsters are in parallel universes that act interact. Yeah, it's possible. But here's the thing. Does it really matter if there's aliens people? Let's let's focus on the thing that's real. The real is is your life good? Someone said, so you're telling me Howard the Duck wasn't real. That is what I'm telling you, Tom Jones. <laughs> China will not allow America to war in Korea. Wait a minute, Tom Jones? Somebody said, aliens. Ex James said, how do you get girls? <laughs> he watching the How do I get girls? Somebody said, Ty, I've been watching your content now for three hours straight. Well, how do you get girls? Somebody said, Kate is real, and that's what matters. Kate, you got a lot of fans on here. Kate likes it, too, when she has fans. She's always like, my fans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to take a note from her playbook. I think I'll wear that top next time. <laughs> Please. You, did you guys? I want, I want fans like that, too. Zach just got, got a, a thousand, thousand fans, fans yesterday. <laughs> hey, tell your friend he's cute. Oh, she's cute. cute. Sorry. <laughs> Do I think time travel will happen in our life because time travel is ethically possible? You don't mean ethically. That would, it's the wrong word. Uh, I don't think they mean possibly either. I think that's the wrong word. I think you mean possibly, yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> my grandpa said that, my grandpa was a scientist, and he said that Albert Einstein predicted that humans would be able to travel time. The problem was, and I might be incorrect how I'm saying this, you have to go the speed of light. When you go the speed of light, time slows down. But the problem is the closer, the faster you go, the more your mass increases. So to become the speed of light, your mass becomes infinite or something like that. I'm probably saying it wrong, but what my grandpa was saying is it's, it's on paper, it's possible. We don't know how to do it. And, um, so maybe you'll figure it out. You know what I mean? Uh, someone said you can't go backwards in time. Someone said fascinating stuff. I'm kind of liking YouTube Live. It's been interesting that YouTube Live is very engaged. Why did 100 plus billionaires invest in cryptocurrencies? Um, well, remember, billionaires are diversifying their portfolio. 
if you're a billionaire, it's very wise for you to invest in many things. You should invest. Almost all billionaires are invested in real estate. Almost all, and before cryptocurrencies, um, almost all billionaires are affect are invested in global commodities, aluminum, tin. Uh, they're probably invested for the most part in insurance companies. Uh, they probably do private banking in offshore company uh, offshore countries. So there's a lot of things that ultra wealthy people do that are not relevant to you and I. If you have an extra $1,000, um, if a billionaire lost all his money but only had 1000 he would not be putting it in cryptocurrencies. So again, if you want to invest in cryptocurrencies, go ahead. I like the world where people... Just remember, if you lose a lot of money, remember this podcast, okay? It's a volatile market, period. Dude, I remember, I, I should record these where I've been buried. Be careful of betting against me on certain things that I know what I'm talking about. I remember a guy, my friend, ranting and raving about gold. <laughs> He's actually a friend of mine. He was on, we were on a TV show together years ago. His name's Dave. And now we talk about his good him. He ranted and raved how gold. I said, dude, I understand how gold works. Gold is an asset that has no real value. Um, so, for example... All the gold in the world is worth more than all the real estate in the United States. What would you rather own? You know, all the gold in the world will fit in this room, basically. So would you rather have this room full of gold or own all the food farm producing land of the United States? You take the gold, I'll take the land because the land produces income. Gold is an arbitrary number that's moved by consumer sentiment and demand on weird things. So people understand nothing about economics and finance, and they'll talk to you as if they're an expert. I spent many years trying to become an expert. I became a CFP, Certified Financial Planner. I spent a decade managing people's money. I'm not the smartest person in the world, but I probably know more than you, be honest, okay? <laughs> so I'm not trying to be an asshole, but I just, I'm like, I'll put it to you this way. I've met very few people, but I have met some that know more than me. Steve Ballmer, I met recently, had lunch with, uh, dinner with him. He's worth now $32 billion. When I met him, he's worth $28 billion. Or when we had lunch, and in the last uh, one month, he or two months, he's made <coughs> $4 billion. He knows. He's smart. So, let's see. Somebody said, liar, three years selling insurance. That was part of what I did. <laughs> I like when people correct my life as if they know because they read an article by some dumbass person who also know that this is a world of the blind leading the blind boy and then they read an article by the blind and they go i see just because you read an article by the blind don't mean you see it just means you know how to follow another blind person well google says google said romish says this isn't live romish are you dumb Who's romish? i don't know this guy this is an example of dumb people it's it says instagram live and i'm on the top live so if you're on the Instagram top live, you are live. Do you think I hacked into Instagram servers and uploaded a recording of me? Of you talking to uh, him. You are part of the problem. A the recording. World. He's saying, <laughs> somebody said, Ty, you have a fake Supreme hoodie. There was this thing. I wore this Supreme hoodie. <laughs> this is my favorite theory. The Super and somebody had this theory. So it has strings that come down. And you know how like sometimes the strings are a little off? So one guy, there was a picture and the string was long. And he's like, ha ha, Supreme <laughs> always has shorter ones. I'm like, you are so, it cracked me up. Yes, you're right. I always buy fake everything. Um, you know, one of my favorite uh, conspiracy <laughs> my theories about one, you. About Supreme. <laughs> my favorite. And let's I, say I do wear Supreme. That's fake. What the fuck does that matter? Only fucking poor people really care that fucking much about shit like that. You think when I meet Mark Cuban, he goes, is that a real fucking thing? No, people got fucking money. Assume you got buddy and they don't give a shit. It's all broke people. Try Wait, are those Yeezys? The stitching. Nah, nah, nah. I know you probably got a thousand bucks in your bank account. That's you. Send me your bank account before you could criticize Supreme shit. What were you going to say? Oh, my favorite, my favorite conspiracy theory about you that I came across on YouTube was some dude. He was convinced that you were making your money by doing this hypnotic trick where you would talk. 
you know, into the camera and you would do this to your glasses every so often. <laughs> <laughs> but my, the, what made me laugh so much about it is, uh, <laughs> is that back in high school, remember, that's how we used to impersonate you. Oh, you well, did? We, yeah, if we were saying, you know, so if we're impersonating Ty, because we all, you know, our group, we make fun of each other, just whatever. But our thing for Ty was always, you know, doing I don't that. remember that. Yeah, we'd be like, you know, if we were talking as Ty, we'd kind of push the glasses up. <laughs> so here, fast forward, this dude has figured out that you were hypnotizing everybody by doing it. And he was so proud of that. He was talking on the video and he's like, you know, it's subliminal and it, it lure, lures you in. Oh, Just I love now I'm at push. the point where I'm like, I want to do this. Like there was a theory I'm in the Illuminati. So me and Zach are going to start recording <laughs> videos where we pretend we think the camera's off, but in the background, we're doing a fucking <laughs> seance around the sacrificing. <laughs> Some people still think the Rothschilds run the world. Please. Can you grow up from your theories? You think the Rothschilds in the Illuminati, the mafia died. There ain't no mafia, Italian mafia is very weak now. It used to be powerful. My dad was from Spanish Harlem. The mafia was real. It ain't that powerful now. You've, st you've been watching too many Godfather movies. What year was Godfather? 72. Yeah, 72. They weren't even at the height. The Cosa Nostra was at their peak of power between like the 30s and the 60s. They got cracked down on, boy. You cracked down hard enough. Al Capone was, yeah. 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, please. You know what the real mafia is now? Now it's corporations. Corporations is the modern mafia. People got all wrong. It ain't, a, it ain't the, it's fucking global, multinational country. Exxon is a powerful company. These are companies that probably put people to sleep every once in a while. You can <laughs> hire Exxon. People think that, that, I believe, I don't believe in conspiracy theories, but I promise you, for example, there's many people buried outside of <laughs> off the Vegas Strip out in the desert. If you dig, dig enough, you're going to find people. And people get killed like that. But it's not by the Rothschilds. For those of you who have read some dumb book that the Illuminati and the Rothschild, and now people are going to be like, but Ty's trying to defend them because I wish I was a Rothschild. <laughs> if you got a connection to the Rothschilds, hook me up, man. I'm good. Hillary is mobster. Oh, that's Danny Hester. <laughs> What's up, Danny? Danny Hester, Mr. Universe is watching this. Ty, you should go on Shark Tank. You mean to pitch a business idea or to be a judge? I got my own Shark Tank uh, show that I'm working on. It's called The Investor. Ty, is charisma what makes you get girls? Um, no, I'll tell you the answer. What? I'll tell you exactly how... Ty gets girls. He's got this little trick where he pushes his glasses up <laughs> when he talks to them he and he just lures or uh, lulls them into a hypnotic state. Yeah. There's many theories on Kate while Kate, why Kate is here. Kate's only here for paying because I'm paying her. I, I should pay you for this podcast. You've sat here through this. <laughs> you know what? Anytime people can't figure out what you're doing and they're jealous, they will come up with theories. By the way, psychologists call this, Delusion, mass hysteria, and a lot of people are delusional. Ty is Illuminati. That's how he gets girls. Hey, <laughs> I'm go. I'm gonna start telling girls that. Will that get me more women? <laughs> Should I do that? Is that why you're with me? <laughs> She's with me because I told her I'm the Illuminati. Uh, but if you go out with uh, the. <laughs> The girls out in L.A., you'll be like, I'm in the Illuminati. And they'll go, uh, oh, that's really cool. That's All a good right. movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they think it's a movie. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Who stars? Who's your co-star? Is there a role that I could be in? Is that your representation? Your agency? Where's Jenna? I think you mean Kenna. Wrong name. Uh, man, these are coming through fast. The YouTube comments kill me. How do we slow these damn things down? Is there a Jewish network in Hollywood? Absolutely. <laughs> Everybody knows that's not a conspiracy. Jews run Hollywood, or they used to more. Now it's more corporate, but sure. Michael Ovitz was Jew. I mean, Jewish people are powerful. That's why I'm Wasserman, know. Spielberg. Yeah, what? Everybody. I mean, there's Gentiles, but Jewish people run. Now, it's not a conspiracy. It just happens. A lot of Jewish, just like Armenian people run Glendale. You know, black people run Harlem. 
Puerto Ricans run Spanish Harlem. I mean, that's how the game goes. Jews run Brooklyn. Go watch Life of, or go listen to Life of OJ on uh, Hove's new album. Four, four, four. Four, four, four. Yeah. Four. <laughs> <laughs> Rome love <laughs> Rome. How much do you love Jay Z on a one to ten? What is Jay Z? Uh, ten. He's the best to ever do it. Yeah. You, hey, when Chris Paul came here for lunch um, on Friday, he brought a video. He, sh- he said, "I'm only going to show this to you, but I think I'm allowed to talk a little bit about it." I ruined the whole thing. <laughs> no, it's not nothing. It, 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 it's basically, yeah, maybe I shouldn't talk about, it, but it has him and Jay Z. Some bad. At, I was thinking of you, Jay Z. Well, here's the funny thing. I can say this. It's basically just Chris Paul and Jay-Z talking, just hanging out. He sounds exactly like he's rapping when he's just talking. (laughs) No, but I mean, not in that, because usually you see interviews of him. He's a little more formal. It was funny. I was like, is that Jay-Z or somebody impersonating Jay-Z? But it was Jay-Z. Chris Paul and Jay-Z are very close. LeBron, Wade... Uh, Carmelo Anthony, they're they're they call them the Banana Boat Brothers. Now Harden, Harden was over here at my party, uh, not my party, but Matt Barnes used my house for a party Saturday. You guys might have seen we had five of the Golden State Warriors came over. Draymond Green was here. We had uh, we had Matt Barnes. We had Swaggy P who was on the Lakers and now got traded Golden State. Stop by Javel. We had Javel McGee and we had uh, Clark. Ian Clark. Clark. And then we had a couple other. We had Aaron Gordon was here. James Harden came through. You know the interesting thing, speaking of sports for a second, never believe heights that they say of NBA <laughs> until you meet it. I can tell you how tall people are in the NBA because I've met a lot of them. I haven't met all of them, but I know a lot of them. JaVel McGee is taller than seven foot, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but Draymond, look at the picture with me and Draymond Green. He is hardly 6'6", which makes him much more impressive. I mean, he's already a badass. I mean, Draymond Green's a badass player. He got a ring. He got two two, two rings. Okay. Two he also guards LeBron James. It, 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 else yeah, best. but LeBron James is a solid 6'8", 6'9", 280. So, Draymond, I, and Draymond's a very nice guy. I was impressed. Super nice soup. All of them were. All of them were. You know what? I'm going to tell you this. Going back to our subject of meeting, uh, of bad, how to deal with assholes, the nicest people are at the top. You know who are the worst people you're ever going to meet? People trying to get to the top. The worst people I ever meet are entrepreneurs. I got to break it to you guys. I, You know, sometimes people are like, Ty, you don't talk that much about being an entrepreneur. Because entrepreneurs, most of them are complete assholes that are Machiavellian that will step on you to get what they want. So for the most part, I um, people at the top are cooler. Steve Ballmer's a hell of a lot nicer than any entrepreneur I've met in a long time who's making a million bucks a year. The worst people in the world are the ones making three hundred dollars to $600,000 a year. I'm serious. You, God help you if you bump it. Don't do a business partnership with somebody who makes three hundred thousand to six hundred grand a year. They make just enough to be able to look down on other people, but they're not that smart because if you know how to make 600 grand, you should know how to make 6 million. So people get cooler in my experience. You might have a different experience when they start making, you know, eight figures, 300,000 to $600,000 a year are just like, ugh. <laughs> so try to skip that stage, go from wherever you are now to making a million bucks a year if you can. <laughs> Because I'm telling you, people get cocky. I mean, I mean, people are like, "Wow, well, I'm making thirty grand a fucking month or something like." That. I'm like, <laughs> "So, <laughs> this is a big bad world out here. You got people making thirty thousand dollars in a minute. You know, fuck your thirty thousand dollars a month." So, it's it's never fun to be around people who don't have a good grasp of where they fall in the real echelon of humanity and there is a status hierarchy of people and if you think there isn't and you don't respect people you're gonna get embarrassed one day you go on the court and it's lebron james on there have some fucking respect you know there's levels to this Mm -hmm. you meet jay-z don't treat him like he's some new rap kid to the game you go "Mm, this guy's got the status in the room there's nothing wrong with that doesn't mean you're their bitch doesn't mean they can abuse you if i was in a room with with 
with a person like Jay Z, LeBron, they started turning to asshole. You can tell them to shut up, just like anybody else. But you give them that initial respect. Um, but when you get these guys or girls making three hundred to six hundred grand, they're probably making more than any one of their friends and any one of their family, and they're just annoying human beings. So, yeah, Kate, you look so beautiful today. Ty, have you read the book Higher Status? Someone's putting in how to raise your IQ. I'll tell you how to raise your IQ. Three steps to raising your IQ. Number one, hang around smarter people. Okay? As the old cliche goes, try to be the dumb person in the room. Try to be the dumb person in the room. <laughs> Step number two, read like your life depends on it. Read. And step number three, read a read and learn a variety of subjects. Those three things. So don't just read books about if you like, you know, Bitcoin. People read 500 books on Bitcoin. Well, that's not giving you an expanded IQ, you know? So what's your definition of smart? Smart is uh, complexity and speed of problem solving. That's what smart means in English. You know, some people say, oh, do you mean emotional IQ? No, well, that's different. That's emotional IQ. Raw IQ is ability to compute. It's like chess. If you can see multiple moves ahead, faster than the other person, more complete than the other person, you're probably smarter. And hey, get used to it. I meet people that are smarter, meet people that are dumb. The sooner you come to grips with the fact that you're going to meet people who can out-compute your brain, then you can try to compete on other things. You can compete on charm. You can compete on social skills. You can compete on your ability to connect with people. Oftentimes, people that are too intelligent have horrible personal skills. They have Asperger's. They have autism in terms of their social skills. They're, remember this guy who came up to us at the movie theater yesterday? <laughs> the guy came I, He might be watching, so let me not say this. Um, somebody said... You know what's interesting about all these? YouTube always has the most hate, but the most intelligent comments. It's like a combination of weirdos and really smart people. <laughs> I don't understand you, YouTube. Sounds just Ty, like my intelligence bedroom. is not the on only key to success. Yes. The five keys to success, I can tell you, if you ask a scientist like Dr. David Buss, they're defined under a 25 facet scale of hexaco. And it's the five scales, 20% each are perfectionism, organization, diligence, prudence, and industriousness. Those are the five factors of success. All right. And that's actual science, not somebody's opinion. And I don't care if somebody wrote a book with their opinion. That's the, what a scientist will tell you. A real scientist. Five facets. Diligence. Uh, sorry. Perfectionism. Organization. Diligence. Prudence industriousness. What those mean are, number one, perfectionism. Do you have attention to detail? If you're a scattered brain idiot, you will make mistakes and you'll lose all your money. Number two, perfect uh, organization. You have to be able to sit down and organize your day. People that have a, a day, a daily routine, there's no plan to it, no plan. To it. They just go with whatever crisis there is. You're always in reaction mode. And then thirdly, you have uh, diligence. That means when things get hard, do you always give up? A lot of entrepreneurs, right when things get hard, they want to switch companies and launch a new business. No, stick the damn thing out. The fourth thing is uh, prudence. If you're a Christian or Muslim or Jew, prudence could also be known as wisdom. You got to know how to make good decisions. Some people are just too dumb. You give them two paths, two doors. One has a freaking, you know, dragon behind it. One has a million bucks. They're always going to pick the wrong door. I don't know why. You probably got a friend like that. They always date an idiot. If there's two girls that like them, they pick the slutty one. And then they get cheated on and like, I don't understand. I'm like, we all knew this chick was a slut. We all know that there's a girl out there. Two guys. One's a nice guy that'd be a great person from the date. One is a freaking piece of trash. And the girl's like, I just don't have chemistry with the good guy. No, okay, you're a fucking moron. And we can predict your life outcome. You know, that's called no prudence. And then lastly, there's industriousness which some people would call hustle, some people call hard work. I like to call it the real technical term, industriousness, which is a combination of cunning, uh, raw work pat, raw you know hours you're willing to put into things. But industriousness is a scrappiness, a bootstrapper. So some of you are just working too hard. Um, 
Working hard is not super related to success. Uh, although you will have to be work hard at times. You will have to work hard. But remember what the uh, famous marketer Hal, uh, Gary Halbert said. He says, one idea that comes to you while you're relaxing walking on the beach can make you more money in a life than a lifetime of hard work. Okay? Smarter is always better than harder. But you will have to, at times, put in long hours. But if you're always putting in long hours, good luck with that. Burn out your adrenals, you know? Jay Henson, 99. Seriously, why are people listening to this guy? He just rants and regurgitates <laughs> unoriginal thoughts. Let me tell you about this guy. Always reminds me of what Albert Einstein said. The thing about smart people is they sound crazy to stupid people. This is a guy that's not intelligent enough to understand what I'm saying. That's the truth. And for each of you, you're going to go through life, and some people are going to be like, what are you talking about? You're an idiot. But the, you're crazy. Your ideas are stupid. It's because they don't have the raw brain power to understand what you're saying. That's my life experience. When you meet people that are utterly confused by what you're saying, there's either two possibilities. One, you are actually dumb, which is sometimes the truth. But it's often they are just haven't caught up yet, man. People don't catch up. I say a lot of stuff. People don't catch up. People were all freaked out that I was like, the more you learn, the more you uh, earn, the more you learn, the more you earn. People were like, what does that mean? Oh, this is a get rich quick scheme. By the way, that was out of a book by Warren Buffett for six year olds on how to make money. That freaked out America. Hundreds of millions of people saw a video here in my garage where go, the more you learn, you know what I like more than this Lamborghini? Knowledge. People were like, what the fuck? This is a get rich kid. Blah, blah, blah. This is a meme. No, nah, it's too smart for you. Too smart for people. The more you learn, the more you earn. There's still people out there thinking that a presidential outcome will affect how much money you make this year. Are you that person? <laughs> You're fighting for... Don you think Donald Trump, Obama, Hillary, or Bernie Sanders are going to pay your bills? Explain that. Explain that. Somebody said, Ty, if you're rich, why do you put yourself out there? I don't know. Ask Mark Cuban. He seems to be rich. He's out there. Ty, I wanted to smoke weed for an hour, but instead I listened to you to give, <laughs> to give me this shout out. <laughs> Ty, what's your favorite quote? One of them is, it's not the smartest or the strongest who survive, but the most adaptable to the environment in which they find themselves. Should I take your SMMA program? How do you feel about starting a fast, casual restaurant with ha healthy food? Uh, those of you trying to start businesses, there's going to be two types of you. There's two types of people. Tell me when we get to three hours. It's 11 more minutes, right? No, no. no we're at 2.30. Uh, I'm just trying to see. This is an experiment. Sorry to, sorry to do this to you guys. I was, I was supposed to go to Herman's house. I was supposed to drive home. To... <laughs> oh, Herman's going to be disappointed. He's going to be really... I'm going to hear it tomorrow. Um, here, let me leave a... Hey, Herman, you're on my podcast. Everybody say hello. Hey, Herman. Hey. I've been going. I'm trying to go three hours. Sorry. <laughs> I'll catch you tomorrow. Herman's a Leo. He'll like attention. He'll be like, I was on Ty's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's my WhatsApp. For those of you not using WhatsApp, not good. Hey, can you grab some snacks for everybody? Because I think people are yeah. near death. Or can you grab some, though? Yeah. Okay. We're going to get this three-hour thing. I'm just going to see if people like three hours longer than... A burger mouth. Rome's hungry. I'm starving. <laughs> hey, it's good to burn. We all need to burn some fat. Maybe not Kate. She's pretty lean, but I do. Zach. Zach doesn't. Zach's a lean I could, I could six-pack machine. We always growing up called more. Zach the pack because of his abs. Somebody said he claims anyone can be wealthy when in reality capitalism thrives on low income workers. Here is a moron speaking on what he doesn't know. I think that's my cousin talking. <laughs> no, these I love people. Let me, let's go down this route. 
Okay, thank you. Morons are sometimes more interesting than smart people because smart people, it's like playing chess with somebody you, who knows how to play chess. You know what they're going to do. I'll go help her. You're going to help? Yeah, I'll be fine. Okay, she wants some food. Um, I didn't say anybody can be wealthy. You probably can't because you're a moron who's closed minded and will actually watch something like this. And that's the best, most relevant comment you have. Okay. So not everybody can become wealthy because most people are programmed for failure. This guy is complete. Whoever wrote this on Twitter, it's a Twitter account. You're completely programmed for failure. How do I know that? Well, okay, here's what I would do. Let's say I met Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. And I told you, I'm not huge fans of either one. I think they do some good stuff and some dumb stuff, okay? I'm neutral on them. Do you think if I met Donald Trump, I would attack him? What, what would I get from that? So I attack Donald Trump. I walk away. What happens? You think it's going to change Donald Trump? He'll go, well, damn, I'm 75. I've seen it all wrong. Ty shed the light in my... No. I would ask him something that would be relevant to my life and be like, hey, Donald, uh, President Trump, I'm an entrepreneur. Here's my situation. What would you do if you were me? Let him speak potential wisdom into my life. If I met Hillary Clinton, I have met Hillary Clinton. It's on my Instagram. I interviewed her a little bit about books and stuff. If I meet her, you think I'm going to bring up if she trashed an email server? What good is that going to do? You think she's going to confess it to me? No, I would ask Hillary. Hey, Hillary, here's my situation. What would you do if you were me? The power of this one question is insane. If you were me, what would you do? So this guy comes on my co on my podcast and he injects something that is low IQ, but also doesn't help him. So there's two kinds of dumb people. There's smart dumb people and what they do is they take advantage of you, but they get a benefit. So at least there's a win-lose. You lose, they win. Then there's some people who are good people. They'll do something for you and you do something for them. That's win-win. That's the best situation. But then there's guys like this guy, which is a lose-lose. When you're playing poker and you don't know who the sucker in the room is, you're the sucker. Okay. Some Abigail says she's up at 12:30. I'm watching this. Yeah, but that it, with that with that, uh, if you don't know who the sucker is, you're the sucker. Uh, uh, what if? Um, oh man, Zach I forgot completely his joke. Forgot my question. <laughs> no, I had a legit question oh. about, and I can't remember it. Oh, it'll it'll come back to me. About uh, oh, well, yeah. How do you learn how to identify the sucker? What if? I mean, that I guess would make you the sucker if you can't identify it. There but you go. how do you how do you learn train to yourself? Identify? That wasn't my question. Gee, D it. Well, if you're in a business negotiation, it's always a status. There's status going on. Yeah, there's status power plays that are going on, interplays of personality types, and you even see it when Donald Trump was shaking hands with the French president. He pulled them off balance. When you change people's physiology, their physical, the way they're standing, you often change, change their mindset. So when you're in any kind of negotiation, I'm not a big poker player. I, I'm decent, but not pro or even amateur quality um, poker player, but I'm a good chess player. Um, there's an element of, of bluffery in this. And so what happens, here, here's what I'll tell you. For the most part, once you're aware you'll know who the sucker is. For example, when people say extreme things in a talk like this. So if somebody, oh, we had a few extremes. One person said North Korea and Washington DC are both equally evil. Whenever you find extreme ide ideologies, you almost f always find idiots, okay? So one other guy wrote that capitalism wants all poor workers, okay? Well, it's not true. And one way to identify the suckers in a room are by, is by truth. So, for example, if there's five of us at a room, one of us says one plus one is two, the other one says, yep, one on one is plus one is two, and the other one says one plus one is four, then he's the sucker. And so capitalism has actually raised GDP and individual wealth in pretty much every country that it's been introduced to. But it's not perfect because it's impossible to create perfection 
in economic systems because economic systems, people, this is what Peter Drucker says. I'm sorry, what um, Will Durant says, the Pulitzer Prize winner, one of the, I think the smartest person to ever lived, in my opinion, Will Durant is the smartest person, the most wise. And he said, because people are born unequal, okay, you will never have 100% equality. For example, I went on Sunday, I played in a celebrity football game, flag football. Kevin Durant was on my team. Kevin Durant is six foot 11 easy. He might be seven foot. Okay, that's the first time I met him in person. He's very, very freaking tall. Okay, is that fair? Jay Harden was at my house. Harden, the beard. He just signed a $200 million contract. He's six foot five, extreme dexterity, extreme good hot and eye coordination. Is it fair that he makes it? So what system do you introduce? You could introduce communism where James Harden would only make the same amount of money as somebody of lesser ability, but that comes with problems too. For example, James Harden probably wouldn't play basketball then. And then you would eliminate sports. Sports brings people tremendous happiness in the world. I mean, of all the forms of entertainment to me that are valuable to society, it's sports. They teach physical activity. They teach a lot of things. And it's just damn fun to watch. So by you going to so capitalism, you're right. There's some element of inequality, but everything has been horrible so far. Fascism. Okay, you had fascism in Italy. In some level, you had it in Adolf Hitler. You know, Nazi stands for national socialistic whatever. That's what the NAZI stands for. Okay, so the Nazi party was socialist slash fascist. Mussolini and Hitler were close. You have communism, which has definitely created the biggest genocides in history. Where's the, who's the, what's the biggest genocides in history? Number one, Mao Zedong in China. I'm reading a fascinating story about Mao Zedong. Wow, what a guy. That's all I can tell you. You think Donald Trump's bad, uh, Rome? Yeah. You got to read Mao Zedong. Mao Zedong was the founder of modern Chinese communism, you know, the, the workers' revolution, and he's killed 70 to 100 million people. Directly ordered the death. That's communism. Number two communist place, Joseph Stalin. Voila, guess who number two mass murderer of all time? Joseph Stalin. Anywhere from 40 to 100 million people. Probably not 100. Most people think around 60 oh, million people. Water? So these people that don't like capitalism, what do you like, dude? Bitcoin? She said some food yeah. cake. <laughs> no, you got to give Rome some real food. Rome doesn't want it. Oh, you got beef jerky? Uh -huh. I don't understand. It's so easy to, to, to say there's a problem. What's your damn solution? Bitcoin? What? I'm serious. That's the IQ of these people who hate capitalism. And all I like Bitcoin. Bitcoin's capitalism, ultimate capitalism, the removal of all. America's not even capitalistic. America's a republic. Capitalism would have no regulation. Capitalism would be more libertarian. People think Bernie Sanders is going to solve it by, you think socializing all medicine will solve it? Go to Canada. I'm working with an entrepreneur who's telling me how bad the Canadian system is of social medicine. He's like, dude, every, so he built an app that you can live stream with a doctor to get your pharmacy because he said people are dying because they can't get to a doctor. It's like nine months to get a doctor. You know? Now, there are some countries like United Kingdom, which has a better medical system and is more socialistic than America. So, But America, you get some crazy disease. Let me tell you what country you're flying to if you got the money. You get a rare form of lymphatic cancer. You get a rare... You get what... um. Steve Jobs had, I think it was pancreatic cancer. You think you're flying to Canada or London? A lot of flights there, medical flights. Get me away from Cedar sinai in LA. I got to get to the fucking socialist clinic in Sweden. I, I once tried to go to the doctor in Scandinavia. I forget what happened. Oh, I remember I was super sick. Just a cold or something. I was like, I never take medication. I was like, dude, I am sick. We get there. I'm in, I was either in Stockholm or Oslo. So I go there. It's a number system, like you're at the butcher. <laughs> Seriously, I pull out numbers. Oh, okay. So I'm in the damn numbers. I looked at the numbers. I'm like, oh no, because they were calling like 
19 and I was like 85. So then I'm like, finally they got my number. It's probably two hours. Then you go in a room. That is for where you tell them what's wrong with you. And then they assign you the actual number. So the lady looks at me. She goes, listen, you're not that sick. We're talking, you're going to be like a code, whatever, yellow. There's like code red, green, or yellow. You're not that bad. So it's a yellow. She goes, I think you're looking at about eight to 14 hours to sit down that hall. I was like, you know what? I'm good. I will be healthy by the time I get in there. So I, you know, I've seen Scandinavian systems. I've seen this. America has tremendous problems, but I don't think it's the capitalism. I think the worst parts of America are the education system. And the worst part of America is the prison system. The, the criminal justice system is unfair. There's, we are still not fully using DNA shit. I just saw this morning a big case. A guy's being let out for murder. Uh, he went into prison in 1994 for a rape. A black guy. Didn't have good representation. Coerced. And um, now D they finally did DNA in 2017. So he's been rotting in a prison from 23 years. And the scientist said it is scientifically possible for him to have been the person who did it. 23 damn years. And the DA still won't let him out. These DAs don't want to admit. So there's problems in America. It's just not the stuff that people talk about. I mean, there's major. This kid that Jay-Z did a documentary on, accused of a backpack, got stuck in Rikers Island for three years, two years in solitary. You're not supposed to be held in solitary like that. He wasn't even 18. I don't think the criminal justice, the one place that I don't agree with capitalism, I don't think the prison system should be for pop, for profit. I don't, and I don't think the military should be for profit. Um, and police shouldn't be for profit. I think the post office should be for profit. Uh, so I think there's certain things, you just gotta use your brain. There's some things you should, you do for profit, some things you don't. Ty, what's your thoughts on a ketogenic diet? Keto, ketosis, I learned that on a farm. When you don't give enough carbs or on a farm, if you don't give a cow enough grain, enough energy, they start burning other things, fat, protein, ketones in your brain. It also makes you smell funny. Cows will start smelling very sweet, but not a good sweet. So if you ever meet somebody not eating any carbs, you smell their breath, I hate it. It's like that sweet, but like, you ever smell that? It's just like, ugh. <laughs> my dog has that kind of Your dog has, yeah, dogs don't eat carbs, really. If you give them meat. Anyway, so people, there's some people, I'll tell you this. I'm not an absolute fitness expert, so I'll stay in my lane, but I hire the top guys. And one of the top fitness trainers, he trained Zac Efron for the movie Baywatch. Most ripped I've ever seen an actor. 5% body fat, muscle. He knows all the rock and all this. He told me, in his experience training thousands of people, he trained Keanu Reeves, Matrix, all that. He said, some people that shit works for and some it doesn't. He said, some people tell you to do intermittent fasting. He said, there's some guys he works with intermittent fasting. They get worse results and some people do better. So, again, avoid extreme ideology. I don't know why humans are obsessed with extreme ideologies. Why do people have to love capitalism or hate it? Why can't you just be like what I'm trying to be? It's like, here's good of capitalism. This, that, and other thing. Here's bad. You can't put cal you can't put capitalism in a prison system. You can't imprison people for profit. Because then it's perverse incentives of putting people in to make more money. They're paid by the head. So they want to put people in. You got you gotta you gotta have poor people have to be able to get good damn lawyers. That's a i I'll tell you what I've learned in the criminal justice. I mean in the in the just being a businessman, better lawyers change the whole game. And so if you can't afford better lawyers, you're at a huge disadvantage in America. I don't know how to fix that, but you got to factor it in. And so people come from the ghetto, you get accused. I mean, you saw this movie Detroit yesterday. You like it? It was a little stressful. Kate was very stressed. It's I was a little tense the whole movie. What'd you think, Zach and Rome? Detroit. I liked it. I, I, um, my my uh, gripes would be more technical stuff like filmmaking stuff. Catherine but Bigelow was the Academy Award winning. She won an Academy director, Award director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Rome, what'd you think? Well, I liked it. But, uh oh. I've gone dark. <laughs> you don't hear it? I, hear I might have stepped on. <laughs> Zach sabotaging. He wants, he's a Leo. He needs more attention. <laughs> oh, I, I, that's what I did. <laughs> I don't want to grab between the legs. As it While they're doing the that, there. we'll. Here we go. Three, two, one. Do I think we're in the Matrix? Yeah, we're probably in some kind of a Matrix. But it's Someone not, said he's just hungry. We just don't know. What? Someone said that we're hungry. All right, Rome. Sorry. No, no big deal. I did like the movie. It was a story that I didn't know, I wasn't aware of. I also found it sad as African American that the things that went on in the 60s still go on today. Um, let's just look at Ferguson, and they're all spun around police brutality. You look at the um, uh, the Detroit riots two years before that was the Watts riot in '65, and then you had '91, uh, '92 Los Angeles riots, and they're all based on the same thing. They're all based on the criminal justice system and abuse, and so on and so forth. So it hasn't stopped. It hasn't gotten any better. The Ferguson police abuse and so on. So right. So the same thing. All these massive riots have started from the same thing. So it was it was difficult to watch. Um, and I often think to myself, how would I would have been in those days? Yeah, that was tough. Um, you know, and, and, and in a lot of ways, I don't think I would have made it. You think you would have you would have you would have gone crazy? Somebody would have shot me. <laughs> You're a big target. Somebody, somebody would have seen somebody. Rome. Rome could. Rome's trying to hide. I would have got shot faster. <laughs> yeah. Because I would have been deemed more of a threat. Yeah. You know. So I you know a lot of change needs to happen. But you know, and I think too, we watch these movies and applaud these movies, but then no one wants to have the real conversations. Right. Like they want to make the movies and give the movies awards and so on. But no one really wants to have the real deep conversations about things and uh, the systemic and the residual effects of those type of things. We don't want to have those conversations. So in a lot of ways, I don't like necessarily watching those movies because I already know what the outcome's going to be. Right. When it, when it went to court, I knew they were going to get off. Never. I didn't know what was going to happen. Thing, but I knew they were going to get off. Yeah. You know, I knew they were going to get off, especially during that time. And it's just sad, you know. And it's just, it's just sad. And then the lead singer, singer of the dramatics. Yeah. You know, it, it, it messed with him so bad. He right. Just, he never sang again. He never sang again. Yeah. Or he didn't want to sing in that environment, you know? People don't realize PTSD is real. People go Very through real. it. You go through enough trauma sometimes, it, 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 it rewires your brain. Now, Kate, what did you think of the movie? I... Into the mic there. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, again, and I, I was a little stressed <laughs> throughout the movie. Yeah, Kate, you probably would have been fine in the 1960s. But I still would have been very scared, and it was very, it was very sad to see all the brutality they went through. I was just like closing my eyes like half of the movie because it was just. Yeah, it was Kate just gets so very sad. stressed. <laughs> but you know what I think? I'm gonna tell you this. I don't know how to solve the world problem. I just try to solve my own and the people close to me, but you got to learn how to make money. You got to learn how to make money. It will not solve all your problems. Money is not the solution to all things, but it'll solve some of the things in the world. And um, if you, what happened in that movie Detroit, part of it was a money situation. This didn't happen in a wealthy area. This happened in a poor... And anytime you get too many poor people and too many wealthy people, it doesn't end well for anybody. And so people that are wealthy have to help people that aren't wealthy. Somebody asked, why do I do these calls? Well, part of it, I have some businesses that benefit from doing these calls. But part of it, I didn't grow up wealthy. And hopefully, some people, and it's becoming quite a lot right now, of people are making more money because they're listening to the stuff. I have free programs, I got paid programs, but this podcast is free. I haven't tried to pitch you on anything. So I do believe that as I make money, I have to be, I have a somewhat obligation to try to help other people make money. You know what I'm saying? And so I think that you're always gonna have some, 
richer than poorer. You're just going to have that. And, and you don't want to create a situation where everybody makes the same amount of money. It's just not right. It will have serious repercussions that you don't want. Like you'll be waiting in a hospital for eight hours to get somebody to stitch you up. You don't want that. Let a, uh, you know what I'm in favor of? A doctor <clears throat> that someone in my family just had a major health issue and had to go to the hospital for five days. I was hoping that specialist made a million bucks a year because that means they studied, they kept up on continuing edge. I don't want them making the same amount of money as a, a person handing me Starbucks coffee while they're in college part time. I want one person making more and one person making less. But I want the person making less to have the option of building up to that person. That's all it has to be. It has to be the option. And some things just aren't fair. I'm never going to play in the NBA. Rome's never going to play in the NBA. Zach's never going to. Kaden never going to play in the NBA. You never know. I do know. You might play in the WNBA, but <laughs> you ain't playing in the WNBA. I've seen you play basketball. So do, am I okay with a world that's a little bit unfair? I was hanging out with uh, uh, at the football game. Sean Merriman was there. The the San, he was the Chargers right and where else yeah. just Chargers and Patriots and Patriots Sean Marion's oh, a was it Patriots I believe Merriman's a huge guy I didn't look at him and go oh, it's unfair that you're so you know you're big and you can play football who cares just move the hell on so all the people that you know there is a there is a, <laughs> a proper reaction to the unfairness in the world some you're gonna fix and some you're not thoughts on Kaepernick Zach. Uh, talking football now. For those of you outside the U.S., we're back to American gridiron football. Uh, I got no problem with the guy making a statement. Doesn't bother me, but at the same time, I don't mind Jerry Jones saying. This, by the way, team. explain what this is. This is about standing for the national anthem. Colin Kaepernick is a black man football player in America, because a lot of people here aren't from America right now, who would not stand for the American uh, the American no, national no. anthem because he thinks America has too much racial inequality unfairness. Yeah, I think he's misguided, but I don't, I'm not flipping out over him not standing or taking a knee. I, I don't really care. What'd you think, <laughs> Rome? First, I need to know how. But I mean, do you agree? Well, that America's evil, and and did that, he say America's um, evil? And that, uh, well, see that I don't, I, I don't know. know. I've got a I don't I don't care so much that I haven't even like gone a, I and looked at I think he said something quotes. like America. He doesn't, you know. Well, the flag is fair. supposed to be the flag is supposed to stand for level of equality for everybody. And right. It doesn't, and it doesn't. You know. Yep. And so. You know, if he feels that that flag is not supporting him or supporting African Americans, and he felt like he wanted to make a stand on it, and, it, and that was his way of a peaceful protest, that's what it was. He didn't hurt anybody, he didn't kill anybody. Right. He didn't do any of those things. Yeah, I'm with and, and what he's and what he's saying is true. Right. What I mean, he's not. This, these are facts. It's not. It's not something that he's making up, and it's not an opinion. It's true. But again, I don't think uh, talking about extreme ideologies. I I think that flag also has allowed him to play in the NFL. Okay, well you can have both though. You can have both. Right, yeah, but that's I mean, when that, and that's all I was I would say is that to uh, to it's just blanket. Zach's that, about that to get beat up by Rome. <laughs> that, 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 that the flag. Um, um, that it, that it isn't true. Uh, I don't think it's that absolute that it isn't true. I, I do. Yeah, there's there is there are issues that need to be addressed. There are could we say there are problems we, would that you guys need both agree this. If I take a slightly different position that this is how I take it. You got to be in the mic. This is how I take it. And tell me if you guys agree with this. Um, black people, Middle Eastern people, Latin people, basically people that you can physically tell are different. Right. You can't tell always the difference between a German and a Polish American. You can't tell. There's multiple generations. They're here. You can't tell. So anything that you can tell a difference, whether it's transgender, black, Puerto Rican, Mex I'm a mix of different ethnicities. I'm half white and half this and that and all this stuff, okay? You got certain obstacles. 
And all I can say is it's not going to be fixed by anybody for the most part besides yourself. That's my main thing. By the time, look, Martin Luther King Jr., what he accomplished in the late 60s. What year did he get shot? 68. 68, okay. They started working on that in the 1910s or actually right after the Civil War. 1865 it took a hundred years it took a basically a hundred years so my point is yes you should try to work on a political solution but just realize it'll be a hundred years so you can do it for your grandchildren whatever you want in your life now go out and get it done so Kaepernick standing up for it it'll help somebody it ain't gonna help him that much it's gonna probably hurt him so Kaepernick should do two things, live part of his life to help other people, but also don't take it so extreme that he, you know. Well, he's not. Yeah. People around him are. People around him are because they see he's being blackballed. So he's not, and he's doing exactly what yeah. he said. He spends millions of his money helping other people, and he continues to help other people. Yep. So he is doing that. He has no power right now right. of anything that happens to him. He may, I, think, I don't think he's going to play again. No, but I don't think it's fair. Why he's not playing again? And go back to a statement that you. Just he retired. Said. No, they're not. They're yeah, not he's no just picking him up. Yeah. Oh, he's a free agent. Yeah, no one's picking him up. Yeah, when you're that, tra- it's like To is a friend of mine. You start getting that reputation, you know. But he didn't do anything. I I do think it's odd why or the question I heard asked. And I think that's. It, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's actually an interesting question. He's uh, he's obviously become the poster boy for it because there were guys that it's supported him. Right. Right. That yeah. did the same thing, or they were in solidarity, right. stood in solid, and you don't see anything happening. One to person got to be the scapegoat. All right, we should switch away from. Somebody said, Ty's programs are expensive, but definitely worth it and still underpriced. That's a matter of perspective. It, it is definitely expensive compared to junk food, which you can buy a full meal at McDonald's for three bucks. Always be concerned when you can buy a full meal at Taco Bell for $3. Be concerned about what you're actually eating. You are pro- you may be eating. Well, you know, I can tell you what you eat. You eat down cows. You know what a downer cow is? That means a cow that's crippled that has a health problem in like New Zealand. What do they do? See, it's illegal to sell a down cow. So I'll tell you what they do. They get a way to stand them up. They immediately send them to slaughter. They grind them into ground beef and they send them to America. And you eat them at <laughs> people. Sometimes you get what you pay for. Is I guess what I'm trying to say. No, that's so. Organic. Yeah, that's organic that's beef. That's grass-fed. Yeah, that's different. <laughs> so when, Ty, who's your favorite rapper? J. Cole, probably right now. It's seasonal. Huh? I said it's seasonal. I like down. I, I believe it or not, I'm going to go on the bandwagon. I like the song. Neighbors. That, no, well, that's J. Cole. I like <laughs> French Montana's song, Unforgettable. That song... Just the way people dance to it. It's just good. Ty, would you invest in Gymshark? Not 100% sure what that is. But, uh, so I can't answer. I don't invest in what I don't know, but maybe it's a good thing. I should learn about it. What do you, where do you get all your energy? Do something interesting in life. Live a life of adventure. And um, you'll get a lot more motivation. Hey, Ty, Bitcoin is skyrocketing. That girl is so cute. Oh, man, now it's starting to go fast on YouTube. Mayweather or McGregor? If I had to bet my life, I would bet on Mayweather. But again, remember I said I don't like to bet on what I don't understand? I've never, no one's ever seen Conor McGregor fight uh, a boxing by boxing rules. Queensberry rules. So you're it's too hard to bet on. But I would say... Connor is a good at surprising people. I hope it's a great fight. You know what I mean? Someone said Marcus says he likes J. Cole, not Kendrick. Kim Jong-un is fat. <laughs> One of my three favorite influential historical figures that you have gained wisdom from. Will Durant. Mm, who's a second one that's a powerhouse? I mean... The philosophers, I would probably, I like reading some of the great philosophers. But if you read Will Durant, he helps you understand a lot of the great philosophers. 
I would, let me just think. Who else do I like? Historical. I mean, I'll just talk about recent one. There's so many. I recently read the autobiography of Malcolm X. Great book. Read that. Talk about a guy that was complicated. A lot of good things. Some crazy things. He believed this one guy was a prophet and was from God or something like that. So he's a little weird, but a lot of, you know, he had a crazy upbringing. His, his dad was put on a train track and had his re- head run over by by a train because they were racist so yeah Ty, I have 50 grand I want to invest if I had to put it all into one adventure what would it be probably it sounds like it's going to be a mistake that's what I would say when you're thinking like that you got 50 grand left and you're going to put all 50 grand in one venture that you don't know much about you're going to lose your money I will bet on it What I would do is put my money slowly into things I understand. You can start businesses for $5 now, $1. The only money that I spend now is on the educational part. Like I want, I'm going into the fashion business. I'll spend money on consultants, books, things like that to learn the business. I can start a t-shirt business now for under a hundred bucks. My friend was making $1.5 million a month selling t-shirts. Then he got bored believe it or not, and stop doing it. <clears throat> so for I'll spend money on paying him as a consultant, but it doesn't cost much. You can drop ship t-shirts, you know? Somebody said, bitch, no, you can't. John Pizzo. <laughs> John Pizzo ain't ever made $10,000 in his life trying to tell me about money. John Pizzo. First, you got to be able to... You know what I've noticed is an interesting thing. I'm very interested in negative comments because there's been all these cool scientific studies done now that show that people who leave negative comments are um, psychopaths. There's a psych- if you go on psychology to get to uh, psychology or today.com, which is basically like the number one website for good scientists that post psychological news on psychology. They did this huge thing and, and basically people who leave nev- negative comments are high in sadism. So sadism is where you take pleasure in the pain of others. Psychopathy is a different one. Psychopath is where you don't feel any emotions. Um, So almost all people who leave you negative comments, you're happy that they leave you negative comments because now they bubble to the top. You smoke them out. You know what you do if there's a criminal in a house? They shoot tear gas in and all of a sudden they come out. So what I like to do is do stuff, right? So post a picture of you being successful on your Facebook. All the people high in psychopathy, sadism, it's called the dark triad. They've got the dark dyad, the dark triad. They have a five complex uh, uh, way of calculating. Those people will pop up and be like, why are you showing off? You'll find narcissists. See, narcissists are always threatened by other people's success because they love themselves so much. So what happens is on your personal Facebook page, your personal Instagram, those longtime acquaintances that you thought were acquaintances, now they, it's like tear gas. They come out and you know how to deal with them. Okay. So you want negative comments. It's not just, you know, if you're a hater, you know, the saying like Drake, it's like, if you ain't got haters, you ain't a pop, you're not popping. Well, that's true. But even more than that, you want haters because how else do you know who are the people to screen out? It's very important. Do I? Someone said, oh no, the president is a psychopath. I don't think Donald Trump's a psychopath. I'm an amateur psychologist, so don't take my word for it, but I've tested a lot of people, more than most psychologists, because I reach about 200 million people a year on my social media, 200 million people, not 200,000. Um, and I can tell you that I would guess Hillary was more likely to be a psychopath than Donald Trump. I think Donald Trump is the most classic case of a narcissist. Hillary might be Machiavellian. I don't think Trump is psychopath. See, psychopaths don't get their feelings hurt. Just so you, I'm almost sure he's not a psychopath. One of the clinical symptoms of a psychopath is they don't respond to negativity. So if you have a psychopath and you go, fuck you, 
If you do this to me, if you screw me over, I'm going to punch you in the face. A psychopath has very low fear levels. That's why they're great as Navy SEALs. They're like, I don't care. You ever meet, if you ever get in a fight with somebody and you look in their eyes and they got that dead look like a psychopath, do not get in a fight with them. <laughs> I once had that in my life, man. I grew up in some rough place. I got in a fight with a guy. Dude, it was, it was a kid that I knew. And man, I'll never forget. He was older than me. And he started hitting me so many times. His name was Jason. He ended up in prison. By 13 years old, he was in prison. He just got out. I'd still talk to him once in a while. He's all tatted up. He went in and out. And this is when I was like 9 or 10 years old. I could already see it. And he was like hitting me. And I, I was like, Jason, it's me. It's Ty. And he like snapped out of it. It was like he forgot. He would get in so much of a rage that you couldn't. It, it, it was weird. I've only seen. I've seen that two times in my life. One as an adult. Where I was in a situation where somebody I'm pretty sure was they were about to kill me. I had to get out of a car, and I remembered that look in the, in an eye. And so what happened? Um, so I don't think Donald Trump has that because he gets he gets hurt. He like watches the news to see if anyone talks crap about him. A psychopath doesn't care. So he's more like a narcissist though is extremely sensitive and responds to all criticism. That's a narcissism. Donald, now Hillary, I've met Hillary. I'm not going to say she's a psychopath, but Hillary is much colder, much less emotionless. Okay. Uh, much less emotion. Ty, you should smack that guy with a stack of money. Which guy? <laughs> I don't know who he's talking about. Okay. We did it. We did three hours. <laughs> -na 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 -na. <laughs> should you choose a degree that you love and may not be financially rewarding as the other degree degree? Yeah, probably don't chase money. You can make money in just about everything in the world. All right. Thank you. By the way, if you happen to be watching this, I will now I forgot to try to make any money from this podcast. I need to get better at that. So I'll put a little little tip in here. Um, for those of you who want practical, real skills in making money, because on my podcast I talk about basically whatever's in the news, whatever comes in my mind. It's just kind of like me just shooting the shit with, with different people. Um, but if you want some step-by-step -step stuff, go to tylovas.com, click on the links on the top. I got different programs. People are killing it. I've now been around the game long enough that people realize this wasn't some random little thing that was renting a house for a day and pretending like I help people. That, t that lasted for about six months, maybe a year kind of died away. So if you guys want to marry Kate, um, I'll be putting an email address. Uh, uh, actually, I'll be putting up, this is her Instagram if you want to follow her. It is TetrisGod7. <laughs> no. Yeah, it is. Just believe, guys, go to TetrisGod7, <laughs> the number seven. Look for the bikini. Tetris, T-E-T-R-I-S, God, seven. And uh, you can direct message her there. <laughs> and if the if the pictures look like a lot of pictures of Zach, then it's a decoy. It's a decoy. <laughs> this is her actual one. So do he, not send her dick pics. Yeah, you know, send lots of dick pics. No, do not send. <laughs> if you guys want to uh, steal her, try to steal her away from me. Tetris God <laughs> Seven. Kate is so nice. Kate, you do come off as even nice. Kate comes off as super nice on this. I am nice. You're not as nice as you come off yes, as your I podcast. Am. Podcast. I'm so nice. Kate is a little bit mischievous. All right, we're gonna end this on <laughs> Snapchat. Just completed three hours. What'd you guys? How'd you guys hang in there? Man, a lot of people. <laughs> Zach sleeping. <laughs> Everybody likes Kate. They think she's so nice, but she's not as nice as. Oh, if you guys want to um, yeah. direct message Kate. People are trying to get, they want to steal her away from me. Uh, go to her Instagram, TetrisGod7. Direct message her. Send nude pictures to TetrisGod7. I'll be putting it here. I'm gonna, I'm and if you can steal her away from me, that'll be awesome. I will be impressed. If, if you're out of shape, send them to TetrisGod7. I'm going to screenshot every one of them and send them to you. I'm going to put that. Uh, if you guys want to steal <laughs> Kate to try. Look, I'm getting so lit up. I'm getting lit up. It says, really? you look so different, Kate. What the? 
<laughs> like that Ty Lopez brought you here. Kate, you look so different. Please tell me those aren't real. Yeah, they are. Are you serious? Oh, Let me yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, you can see it, right? Is that what, that's from what he just said? Yeah, these are Let notifications me see. I just got. <laughs> you look so Love your outfit choices, Kate. Oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> By the way, yeah, if you're baby. not understanding, Tetris God 7 is actually Zach's. Um, let me see it. Let me see the actual comments. That's good. Let's hold them up to the live. Oh, Zach doesn't sure. want. Zach no, wants no, no, all no. the. Okay, someone went through well, all there the were the notifications. Hang on a second. That's cool. Zach wants all the nude pictures of the guys, and he doesn't want to share. No, 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 he no. didn't want to share with you guys. Why well, screenshot it? I'm Am I the son of Jennifer Lopez? <laughs> <laughs> Ah. Ty, how do you feel about starting a fast food restaurant? Okay, the, they'll hungry. start. Showing. I was hungry, guys. These okay. are so funny. <laughs> I did not expect. Why the man hard. hold his nose? I don't know. That's just the newest one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much for being here. TyLopez.com. By the way, if you ain't watching my Snapchat, you missing the real deal. My snaps got stuff you ain't gonna see anywhere else on any of my social and anybody else in the world social. It's kind of an interesting one. Sometimes it's boring, sometimes it's good, but I think it's more good than boring. I got a pretty big following. Someone said Kate's a psychopath. No, she's not a psychopath. She's a little more narcissist. She's what? not as bad, you are. She, that's her weakness. No, Kate. he doesn't know what he's talking about, guys. Kate, I don't know. <laughs> Someone said Snapchat is for kids. No, Snapchat is not for kids. All right, talk to you guys soon.